good morning to all of you. We are going to begin the student orientation 2022. And uh, um, so, um, Today, uh, we have uh, uh, a series of uh, activities planned. Uh, in the morning, uh, the director will be talking and, uh, and the senior assistant librarian will be talking. And uh, 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 the system analyst will be talking about the MIS and in the afternoon session is for your own board of study members to uh, have a chat with you and discuss uh, about your own unique uh, issues. You can introduce yourself and uh, get to know the teachers, get to uh, ask all kinds of questions that you have, and uh, we can move on, I think. And so that uh, we can plan how to start the programs and go on. Uh, for the morning session, we have not uh, asked all the teachers to come in because the, there are about 350 teachers and uh, we have about 500 students uh, planning to join the orientation. And uh, with that, uh, it's going to be a huge number and the teachers are quite busy with many activities. So we ask all the teachers to join in the afternoon session with their own students. And that's more important uh, because all the teachers know about this presentation. They have seen my presentations before during the last few years, but we have uh, invited the board of study chairpersons and secretaries uh, to come in so that uh, they can have a nice follow-up. They would know uh, what kind of uh, points that I talk about so that they don't have to repeat those points again in the afternoon at one o'clock. So um, let's begin the, the presentation by the director. I am uh, Professor C.M.B. Dimitrova, um, the director of PGIA. And uh, so, uh, I first uh, want to uh, sort of like apologize that uh, we cannot bring you uh, here. Uh, we used to have really nice glamorous on ground orientations. And uh, usually we get to know all the students. Students come here, do their registration, pay their money and get to know about other students and meet with their teachers on the same day and uh, build up the networking, share their the WhatsApp groups the emails, phone numbers and all that and get everything set up. But unfortunately, earlier we thought like uh, during this time, uh, the COVID situation would go down. Last December, I thought it would go down and we would be able to start in March. But uh, unfortunately, the sea, it seems like the hidden, the beast is like uh, the rising everywhere. I don't know the actual numbers. Nobody knows the actual numbers. Now it has kind of gone to the community. So it seems like, uh, in the near future, all our operations will be on uh, going uh, actually uh, online, most of the, those things. And when it comes to examinations, we will have to think, we will have the options either to have the exams, at least exams on ground, or to resort to the online exam procedures. Those are the challenges that we will have to face in the future. Okay, so let's start. So. Congratulations uh, once again for all those who sat for the aptitude test and got through and got your uh, transcripts, all these requirements together and put it uh, right and got selected for the master's M field and the PhD programs at this prestigious University of Peradeniya. The Postgraduate Institute of Agriculture is a national institute, but it's uh, uh, attached to the University of Peradeniya for all its uh, academic uh, <clears throat> credentials. Everything is done by the, the even the appointment of the teaching panel and uh, the, all these uh, curricula, all these revisions, the new curricula, everything should be uh, the, going into the academic development and planning committee of the University of Peradeniya and for the Senate approval. And with that rigorous approval, it goes to the council. And so that all these degrees that are awarded by the University of Peradeniya, not by the Postgraduate Institute of Agriculture. And if you go to the YouTube uh, now in um, uh, this uh, February 22nd, 23rd and 24th, we have uh, three days. Uh, huge uh, on-ground uh, convocation 
Uh, the second day, 23rd, uh, is going to be the for the PGIA. And we are, I will be calling the names of these uh, graduates and the uh, chancellor will garland them. So that would be a really nice occasion, a very pleasurable occasion for everybody. But we have limited the attendees of this. All these uh, parents, if you see, this is our university indoor gymnasium. It's a huge one. And all these parents and others are uh, well wishers are sitting on the top outside while all these graduates are here. So that's going to be, so if you want to go to YouTube, it's uh, everything is uh, uh, aired uh, live. Uh, and uh, so uh, if you want to know about the PGA, well, the, our date is uh, 23rd of uh, 23rd of February, just next week, you will have this one. Okay, so um, uh, I know some of you probably have not uh, uh, had the opportunity to come to this uh, beautiful university of Peradinia, but uh, some may have uh, even not been able to get into the university system uh, in Sri Lanka. So, so I know some may have uh, gone to India and China and so many other places and got their degrees, sometimes external degrees. And this is the opportunity to come to University of Peradenia and go through this, uh, this prestigious and really beautiful procession and getting garlanded. And uh, the opportunity to have a degree from the University of Peradenia, the oldest university of Sri Lanka. The Postgraduate Institute of Agriculture was established somewhere around 1975, 1996. And this is the Postgraduate Institute, uh, particularly for agriculture. And this is the oldest uh, Postgraduate Institute established in Sri Lanka. And now uh, it has grown from like 1970s upwards. Now we have more than 350. Uh, about 360, 370, the academics are in the teaching panel, trying to teach. And uh, we are taking the people from the research stations, like a uh, tea research station, rubber research station, coconut, sugar, rice, all kinds of the fruits, all kinds of research stations are there with us, the Veterinary Research uh, Institute and all that kind of places. There are people with PhDs and we are getting their support. Some of them are of the some uh, directors, uh, deputy directors, and sometimes director generals. And uh, all these people sometimes are in our teaching panel. And uh, sometimes in the industry, there are people with PhDs uh, who are really qualified. And we take their, uh, their service as well, particularly for programs like uh, MBA program. We take their, uh, so the Faculty of Agriculture, Peradenia has about 90. Uh, members who are serving at this uh, the panel, but uh, so uh, everyone else is from outside. Uh, we have about uh, nine uh, universities offering agriculture related degrees and their deans are in the board of management of the PGIA. So this is truly a national institute. And this teaching panel is uh, you can challenge to anybody is the best collection of uh, the elite teachers in the field of agriculture. We know some other universities offer a couple of master's programs, but uh, we offer 30 master's programs. So you can see the see the, the depth and the breadth of this institute. So uh, all the, <clears throat> the uh, why then it is affiliated to the, or, or attached to the University of Peradenia, is because it's an academic institute and the standards must be maintained, the curricula, the teacher standards, you cannot take any kind of unqualified person to be in the teaching panel because he's a friend or somebody. And uh, so all these standards are maintained rigorously by the Academic Development and Planning uh, Committee, ADPC of the university and the Senate, and it goes to the council as well. And then through the UGC, so that is why it's uh, the degrees are awarded by the University of Peradenia. And uh, so you have the, the ability, you have the opportunity to get involved with the university. The uh, Peradenia University is probably uh, uh, ranked sometimes as top 10 scenic universities in the world. 
and uh, so you can take photographs you can come and you can get the services of the of the gymnasium or all these uh, facilities so this is that sarachandra uh, the the theater open air theater and uh, so uh, all these uh, dramas and things are held here there are no uh, the curtains so no kind of a backstage kind of a situation so everything is kind of open for them and uh, no theater to the no curtains to close so this is a unique environment for all these uh, drama people and people to uh, it used to be traditionally like if you have a really nice drama first they show it into the the university uh, the elites and uh, if they do not reject if they applause and if they appreciate and that's uh, that means they are true so that's a huge test so we have the playgrounds the the all the opportunities we have the health center university health center even if you have covid or any any test that you want to do you can always go to the university health center with your pgi id and you can get all the services and we are trying to link you to the other centers of the university uh, things like the career guidance center and the counseling center and uh, many other uh, units of the PGI, the main library and the whole library system. So we are trying to get you in, into that one. And uh, so with your university ID, you are eligible to use any of those. We have a huge swimming pool and things. Unfortunately, this COVID situation, I hope it's going to be temporary, probably at least like next year things would get better with the herd immunity uh, building up. I hope we will be able to uh, uh, move forward and uh, have this PGIA day and other student activities at this uh, university uh, playgrounds and play other things. The Faculty of <coughs> Agriculture, excuse me, uh, University of Peradinia is kind of like the mainstay or the backbone of the PGIA. Uh, we use the the most of the teachers come from this uh, uh, the faculty of agriculture university of peradinia i am from the faculty of agriculture university of peradinia and uh, the most of the even the boards of study that i am going to explain in the future the internal members are appointed by the faculty board of the faculty of agriculture so the faculty of agriculture, the dean of the faculty of agriculture is in the board of management, uh, finance committee, the audit and management committees, and the coordinating committees, uh, and everything as ex officio. So there's a huge role the faculty plays, and uh, uh, the faculty, the auditoriums, the lecture theaters are also used uh, for this uh, number of classes that we hold uh, during the weekends and. Uh, and the weekdays as well and uh, many of the students uh, use the, the research uh, laboratories that we have at the faculty the faculty has eight departments uh, we have the uh, department of agriculture engineering agriculture economics and business management uh, we have the crop science animal science food science and technology soil science agriculture biology agriculture extension uh, uh, like that uh, we have uh, the eight departments and uh, with all those eight departments the students do uh, research in those laboratories the phd mphil and master students so the faculty is the of agriculture is the greatest strength that we have for the pgia the earlier the in 1948 uh, when the university was established uh, we started with uh, uh trying to do uh, postgraduate studies we trying to provide postgraduate education and during that whole period of time you know the the country was uh, kind of like developing at that time and uh, that didn't work very well uh, sir ivo jennings was here uh, uh, he was in the higher degrees committee in colombo so he came to Peradinia, he came to uh, Kandy to find a nice place and he thought like this scenic place of the Peradinia is the best place with the covering from uh, top from Hantan mountains all the way down to Mahaveli river, the longest river in, this, in the country. And so in this scenic land, he established this one. So to establish higher education. So thanks to him and, uh, uh, but the postgraduate period didn't go uh, so well only five people graduated up to 1975. So there was this huge uh, need 
uh, because the the Department of Agriculture and many other places they need people with PhDs, they need people with M fields. They have to develop new rice varieties, all these new varieties, and uh, all the type of advanced research that they have to do uh, requires M fields and PhDs. So we really needed a, a, a dedicated place. So in 1978, the Universities Act was there, but uh, under the University Act, the PGIA uh, ordinance was formed. And in this one, uh, so under that one, uh, we established the, the Postgraduate Institute of Agriculture and uh, starting with uh, Professor R. R. Appadure. And uh, now uh, we have uh, evolved and uh, all the master's programs that uh, we have, we have about uh, 30 master's programs are offered under 11 boards of study. So uh, it covers, you can see a whole comprehensive coverage uh, starting from the soil level, all the way to the crops, all the way to biology, all the way to the engineering, extension side statistics and the business management, everything is there. So if you look at the Crop Science Board of Study, some of you have already registered, it's offering uh, six different uh, uh, master's programs uh, under Crop Science, and uh, uh, they are all in the handbook and they are all in the prospectus, and the handbook and prospectus are now in the web. And uh, in the agricultural biology, we have uh, the biotechnology and plant biology and conservation and breeding the two programs are offered. The biostatistics uh, is uh, we are mostly we're not uh, moving on to theoretical type of statistics, but more on to data analysis and using real data with crops and uh, animals and all these other biological aspects. So these are really nice ones for anybody to learn about uh, or easier way to learn about statistics rather than going to prove mathematical things. Uh, this is a real uh, hands-on uh, data analysis kind of things that we do with applied statistics and the biostatistics. Two programs are offered. The plant protection, uh, you know, these days uh, with all these uh, army worms and all these things going on. So we have this uh, pathology section and the entomology section. So we have the plant protection technology and the molecule and applied microbiology. Those two degrees are offered. The food science is in huge demand now, all kinds of people, including the medical, the nurses and the nutritionists, all types of people, non-agriculture people are really interested in these programs. We have a food science and technology and food and nutrition two programs, very, very popular programs. We are actually offering these biostatistics and food science programs, these uh, two biostatistics and two food science programs in Colombo as well. So uh, if you join the Colombo program, the intakes and the dates are different. And uh, we now, the, the Kotalawala Defense University, KDU in Ratmalana has given us the lecture rooms uh, on payment basis for us to conduct the lectures there. So all these uh, the people, uh, even the, the people who work in KDU and uh, around uh, many people who are in Colombo area uh, likes to come on ground to KDU and uh, so uh, they like to uh, follow the courses there. So the teachers uh, travel from here to, so even I go and I teach uh, statistics, we uh, get up in the morning at four o'clock and but we are there in KDU at eight o'clock sharp and we have the classes from eight to five in KDU. These days, of course, uh, most of those classes as well were resorted to online. But usually we prefer to interact with the students. The students are uh, adults and many of them are doing jobs. They have the academic background as with the first degrees. So we do like to do share their views and experiences and then develop the, the courses and the, the teaching uh, in an interactive manner, which is really nice. I think it's beneficial for all the students Agriculture extension is another huge one. We have the development uh, communication and extension we call DUCOM and uh, the other one we call OM, organizational management. This one also there are many uh, non-agriculture uh, the candidates are interested in this OM because it is useful for, for and the DUCOM because it is useful for many, 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 many type of uh, uh, employee, 
uh, employment and it's very useful uh, to get into this communication and uh, management type of uh, skills uh, to develop into this one. <clears throat> okay, um, uh, someone was, may, may have raised hands, but I cannot really interrupt what I, we will do. Is like, uh, uh, just please uh, put your uh, questions in the chat box. And uh, so that, uh, uh, because this is going like a webinar style, this is not like a basic Zoom meeting because we have uh, more than 300 participants. Already we are now 385 has logged on and the number will go up. And uh, uh, so uh, we cannot answer individual questions right now. Uh, I'll finish the presentation and uh, people can, I think the best way is to put your question in the chat box and we will spend about uh, 15, 20 minutes uh, discussing about these individual questions because sometimes when one student has a question, it's not only for that particular student, it's for everyone. So I think we can entertain all kinds of questions and in the afternoon you can ask specific questions about each board of study. So uh, agricultural uh, economics uh, board has uh, the agricultural economics uh, master's degree, environmental economics master's degree, and the natural resource management uh, uh, degree. The NRM is also covering a lot of areas, not only uh, economics, it covers uh, all these type of things about uh, the land degradation, the, the natural resources, the waste management and all the, all these kind of aspects, although it's uh, mainly uh, occurred under the Agicon, the teachers come from all the other boards as well. Agricultural engineering is also becoming very famous with the agriculture and biosystems engineering. Now there are many students graduating from other universities with the biosystems uh, undergrad, uh, bachelor's degree. And uh, so they are looking for a master's level and uh, this is the place. So please tell your friends if you have any, any biosystems related, uh, if their programs are new and as undergrads and uh, if they feel like they have not got the really good knowledge enough to move on, they can of course come to the PGIA and get this master's degree. And I think uh, our, our teachers are really, really uh, good and they are friendly and uh, you can really learn a lot and get the best out of this one and become confident in your future work. The geoinformatics, okay, there is a, a, a typo here, it's geoinformatics. Uh, that's where they talk about GIS and other applications. Once again, there are many people uh, who are coming into this program, not from agriculture, but from other places, because GIS even is used uh, even by the malaria uh, campaigns. And uh, so applications are many. Uh, IWRM, we call it Integrated Water Resource Management, is also a very popular program in the ag engineering that they talk about water resources, hydrology, and uh, so on. Business Administration Program is also one of the oldest. I know, uh, I think you all know there are many business uh, admin uh, programs are there uh, in the uh, already um, in many, many places, but our program is, uh, is much advanced. Usually uh, courses are like 25 credit uh, uh, courses. In other places, ours is about 36. And uh, this program is one of the oldest MBA programs uh, in the country. So it's so really nice if you really want to learn something and uh, become confident and become a leader in your area. I think uh, you are welcome to join that MBA program. So. Uh, those students who have raised hands, please put your questions in the Q&A section or in the chat box. Uh, we cannot uh, individually interrupt the program uh, 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 and we cannot open the microphones uh, because of this uh, webinar situation. Please put your question in the chat. In the animal science program where I am also uh, involved in, uh, so we have a master's in animal science. This is very popular among the the animal science, livestock people, and even the, the veterinary surgeons all over the country. The aquaculture is uh, very famous. This is called uh, aquatic bioresource management and aquaculture. It's famous uh, among the, the um, those who are employed in NACDA and other fishery sections. The poultry science and technology is very uh, popular among those who are working in the poultry industry. Dairy and meat technology is very popular among those who are working in the dairy and meat industries like Elephant House, Cargill, Skills, Nelna, 
Chris Bro and all these other places that they are working in. So a lot of uh, people coming into Peradine. So you can see um, the, the, all those people that they are coming in. Uh, you can see that uh, uh, you, if you get to know them, unfortunately now everything is online, but I think situation will change and you will have a really nice network of people elite people of these people is, are going to be like deputy directors, the director generals and all these, uh, the high posts in the future when they become like 85, when they become like uh, uh, 50 years old, uh, 55 years old, when they become senior, all of you will be taking up in the higher position. So this networking is really nice. So rather than sticking to your own uh, uh, group of students, we uh, uh, invite you to actually uh, uh, get to know all these other students as well. We will organize uh, things like PGIA day and things we could not do last time, but uh, hopefully when the COVID situation dies down, we will get the permission to do those things on ground. So you can interact and you can compete with cricket matches and tug of war and all those things with the different boards of studies. So you can actually, uh, this is a really good opportunity for you to get to know all these uh, people who are going to be big shots in the future in Sri Lanka as well as abroad. Soil science uh, uh, program offers environmental soil science and soil microbiology. So um, so these are the ones that are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So these are the programs that we have. Uh, let me quickly go through this one. So it is possible to double MSc from the same board of study or from different board of studies where you want to select. Okay, so these are simple questions that they have. You cannot do two master's degrees. You have to, uh, do, uh, you can only do one master degree. And uh, if you do two, that's considered as uh, concurrent registration. And you can finish one and use those, uh, sometimes those courses are similar. So you can uh, finish one and register for the other one and transfer some of those credits and you can move on to the next one. So I think that's easy. Okay, so this is how the, the the admin structure is set up. You are all here as the students, and this time we have about 550, 600 students coming in, and many of them are registering. I think uh, about half of them have already registered, and the other half uh, still have issues with uh, transcripts and uh, recommendations and things like that. Uh, so they are considered as provisional students. So they can follow the courses, but uh, they will not uh, get the grades. They will not be allowed to sit for the examination or get the grades if uh, they have not completed all these admission requirements. So the, uh, we want them to uh, urge their universities, their faculties to send the necessary transcripts and all those things and get these requirements complete soon because we will be sending these Zoom links to everybody in the beginning but at one point we will stop sending Zoom links to those who do not complete, uh, complete these requirements. So we cannot send the Zoom links forever for those students who don't care or who don't complete the requirements. So without the degree certificates, uh, valid degree certificates and things, uh, we cannot consider them as, it's illegal to consider them as students. And when they are still undergrads, we cannot consider them as PG students. So we have to... <coughs> We have to complete all these uh, necessary requirements. So uh, you have to abide by those things. So try hard, try hard at least to go physically and get these requirements completed. So unlike in the one ground situation, we have difficulty communicating uh, with individual students. Uh, so we don't know them personally. So we cannot advise uh, many people uh, personally, unlike in the undergrad situation, in the, in the usually the uh, on-ground situation, uh, excuse me. So in the on-ground situation, usually students come here, chat with us, and then we sort out many of their issues. So now they have to be proactive. You have to make sure all your requirements are complete so that you can move from provisional status to the uh, regular student status. So those who got regular student status, congratulations. You are ready to go. So the, we have this huge teaching panel and they are under this board of study where every semester we appoint teachers sort of newly. For, the, for that particular semester, we give the contracts, we give the teaching appointments by this board of study. So the board of study has external members and internal members. The board of study has um, five internal members appointed by the Faculty of Agriculture, University of Peradina. This is what I said, the Faculty of Agriculture here. The Peradinia uh, is, the, is the backbone 
uh, is the one who is doing the whole thing. Uh, even today, you will see they are the ones conducting all these board of study meetings. And uh, we take the three elite uh, external members who are professionals from outside into the board of study. So each board of study has eight members, five plus three. So we have 11 boards of study. So we have uh, 11 board of study means so we have uh, uh, eight times 11, uh, 88. And these board of studies, uh, all your requests coming, for example, like changing the degree programs or dropping certain courses or adding some courses or appointing supervisors and uh, for your directed studies, for your research, all these progress presentations, everything is done by them. So they meet, usually they meet about uh, uh, every two months. So at least six meetings are held, uh, uh, chaired by the chairperson of the board of study. The director is also there, but uh, chairperson secretaries are there for every board of study. So they handle their matters and they are proud to handle their matters because they are the elite people in their discipline in Sri Lanka and they are proud to serve and they're proud to uh, contribute to the human resource development in agriculture. That is the mandate of PGIA, human resource development in agriculture at the higher degree level. <clears throat> so uh, then all these chairs and secretaries of these 11 boards, uh, they meet in something called coordinating committee. In this coordinating committee also, we have meetings about every two months. So the issues that are kind of like unique to each board or sometimes they come to each one and when uh, they discuss at the coordinating committee, when they want to change policies of the PGIA, even about the fee structure or offering of courses on ground online examination matters, all these things they discuss at the coordinating committee. So all 11 boards do the same thing. So no prejudice against one board, one student, everything. So when one board approves certain student request or reject a certain student's request, all the other boards, uh, chairs and secretaries are there. And they also can see, they also can see uh, what is going on. So we all uh, get involved in making sure that all boards do the same thing. Finally, all these minutes, <clears throat> all these decisions go to the board of management. Board of management is a huge one. Uh, uh, it has all the deans of these faculties of agriculture in the country, the Peradeniya, the Jaffna, Ruhuna, Eastern, uh, Southeastern, uh, uh, Wyambe, and uh, I think only Uwavella's uh, dean is not there yet but uh, all the other deans are there. And uh, we have the Conservator General of Forest, the Director uh, uh, of Department of Agriculture, Director of Department of Export Agriculture, uh, Director uh, General, oh, sorry, Director General of the Department of Agriculture, Director General of uh, Export Agriculture, Director General of uh, Department of Animal Production and Health, and this huge group of people. We even have the Dean of the Faculty of Veterinary Medicine, and the UGC nominees are there about six. We have the finance committee, the finance people, the treasury representatives are there, and the, the Ministry of Education representatives are there. So it's a huge uh, group of elite people uh, coming in here. Uh, about 35 members are there, and they meet about once in two months, and they are the ones who approve uh, most of these decisions, decisions, admin decisions, and financial decision taken by the board of management. So the financial decisions, we have the finance committee separately, we have audit and management committee separately, separate from the university. So those financial decisions go there, but all these academic decisions must go to the Senate of the University of Peradeniya. And Senate is the body above the board of management in, uh, in all, for all the academic matters, all the academic matters, uh, Senate is the one that making the decision and finally, the Council of the University of Peradeniya approves all these degrees and the appointments and so on. So this is the basic plan we have. Uh, I want you to, I think you will meet all these uh, chairpersons and secretaries today uh, for your own. Uh, please note down who are the re relevant uh, chairs and secretaries uh, for the Ag Biology. <coughs> we have Dr. Chandrika Pereira and uh, Dr. Nipani Sirimalwatha, newly appointed chairs and secretaries. They will be there for the next three years with you. 
Agikon, uh, Professor Pahan Prasad, they, uh, they will meet you actually, and Dr. Chenal Veera Surya. And uh, uh, so get please get to know them uh, personally, share their emails. Uh, some of them uh, are willing to give their phone numbers as well. And uh, so you can uh, come up with WhatsApp groups and uh, develop your communication links. For Ag Engineering, we have Professor Dhammi Dayavansa and uh, Professor M.I.A. Maujud, these are senior uh, members who have been serving in these boards for uh, years and years. So they are very well experienced about the procedure. So you can ask any question. Uh, for Ag Extension, we have Dr. Chandana Jayavardhan and Dr. J.M.P.M. Anuradha. Uh, Dr. Chandana told me uh, that uh, their meeting is going to be uh, starting, their board study meeting will start at three o'clock instead of one o'clock. So please verify that uh, Ag Extension students whether you got this information correctly and uh, make sure to join because uh, in this one you will be talking about the mode of operandi so the, the how you would operate as a board when will you have the classes and uh, so whether they will be on saturday sunday or whether they'll be on weekdays evenings how does the timetables come in and how do you register for the courses without registering in the mis you cannot really uh, get the zoom links and uh, so without Zoom links, you cannot come in anyway. And uh, so without registering in the MIS, uh, without making the payments, you cannot really, uh, so all the grades and everything, they put it into the MIS. And uh, so if your name is not in the MIS, you are nowhere. For the animal science, we have Professor RMC Deshapriya and uh, Dr. Jayampati Ekanayaka, they will meet all of you. And uh, uh, for biostatistics, we have Professor Talit Surya Goda and Dr. L.M. Rankot. And uh, uh, Dr. Rankot came newly. Professor Surya Goda has been there for a long, long time. And uh, for business administration, we have Professor Sarat Kodituapa. He's also the dean of the Faculty of Agriculture. And Dr. Dilini Hemachandra uh, will be the secretary. And uh, you can get their numbers and uh, you can communicate with them. For crop science, we have again Professor Janaki Ishwara, uh, who has been serving for quite a long time with uh, Dr. D, uh, DMSB Disanayaka, is the new secretary. For food science and technology, we have Mr. PC Arampat. So you know that uh, they go to, and uh, Dr. Niran and Rajapaks, and you know they go to KDU as well. And uh, they are very well experienced. They have been serving in this board for a long time, long, long time. Probably 15 years or no. Uh, for plant protection, again, we have senior people like Professor Devi Kadi Costa and Professor K.S. Hemachandra. Um, so they are, they are the ones that who are the, the handling the diseases and pests kind of aspects mainly uh, with respect to the agriculture. So you can see like we are covering every aspect of agriculture. The soil science, we have Professor Devi Tarane and Dr. Chami Attanayaka. Uh, they will be happy to talk to you. And they have uh, even mentioned they want to take even uh, more students or so last minute students coming in. They want to entertain them and try to get more and more because nowadays, you know, the, the organic agriculture is coming in, all kinds of different uh, views are coming in. So there are many, many who are really uh, talking about these things without knowing the subject properly. That's unfortunate in Sri Lanka. And, uh, but there are many who are involved who really want to know the truth about the soil nutrition and all those things. And they, they are welcome to join even, even now. I think the official deadline is over, but uh, we have not started the courses yet. So if anybody coming in the last minute, we can, I think we can still entertain them. So uh, these are the teachers and everything, but now we have a, a tutors assign, assigned for this each board of study. And uh, please take down these phone numbers and these uh, relevant uh, email numbers of these ones. These are the teachers. They are actually not visiting lecturers. They are 100% full-time in the PGIA. So they are here at the PGIA physically, and they are the, here to attend to all your board of study needs. They uh, monitor Dr. Harshani, uh, Ms. Suyama, all these uh, postgraduate qualified ones. Uh, Ms. Virashmi, and, uh, and uh, so these people will uh, uh, help you with any kind of questions regarding that if you cannot go to MIS or if you cannot get make the payments. If they don't know how to solve it, they will come and ask us and uh, then they will uh, come back to you and inform you. So uh, usually the secretaries and chairs that I mentioned in the previous slide, these are teachers, they are full-time teachers, they do so many national development kind of activities and sometimes they are very busy 
So please understand that they are busy. Please, uh, please really respect the other people who are really above you. And uh, uh, but with these uh, tutors and uh, lecturers and senior lecturers, these are temporary tutors, temporary lecturers, temporary senior lecturers. These people you can contact anytime. Send an SMS uh, if they are busy, and so that they will try to contact you and uh, be patient. But uh, try to work with them, and uh, they will help you go through at least in the initial stage. Once you are on the boat, once you are all logged on, once you are all uh, registered, once you are all ready to go. I think uh, you are okay. Then I think you can get to know from the others and learn from the peers and uh, how to uh, move on forward. Uh, but in the beginning, you may have your individual questions and you are alone in your home or office. And so your best way to communicate is with these people and they will answer in uh, Ms. Virashmi is also the PGIE coordinator, which means she answers many, 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 many questions coming from all boards of study. And uh, so the most of the time, her time is spent on coming up with this, uh, all these questions coming in. So these numbers, uh, so if they are not in the web, uh, please take down. It's their first name at and at PGIAACLK. So all these are PGIAACLK. Okay, so um, some of you I know have still uh, difficulty with the finances and uh, uh, the financial side is a huge issue for many people and uh, so we know and uh, some of them are, uh, have jobs but uh, have lost uh, due to COVID situation. So they have financial difficulties. Some of them are fresh graduates and they have, their parents have been spending money on them for a long, long time. And now uh, they want to spend another 150000 on the PGIA, which is kind of difficult. But the payment structure that PGIA has is essentially like uh, it's governed by the, the Ministry of Education. So they have the financial officers, accountants who come here, who are in the members of the Finance Committee of PGIA. And the members of the Treasury are representatives of the, uh, the Treasury representatives are there at the Finance Committee PGIA. So, our hands are raised. So our hands are the, the kind of like uh, uh, tied here uh, in the sense like we cannot do whatever the things we want because we are operating as a government institute. So even when the board of management wishes to do all kinds of uh, different things in favor of students, we have to abide by all the financial regulations uh, and uh, all the administrative regulations and uh, we have to uh, give the annual reports, the procurement plans, action plans, strategic plans, and uh, all sorts of uh, things are going on with the income generation, the how the income recognition policies and so many things that we have to do. We don't want to bore you with this one, but please understand if some of if PGIA seems to be operating like in an inhuman manner or sometimes like uh, not uh, like paying attention properly or something that is not because we are not paying attention, but that is the we our hands are tight and we usually put this put thing forward to finance committee and get approval. Sometimes we succeed in getting approval for the new policies. Sometimes we don't. When we don't, the students sometimes suffer. Not only here, it is on every PG institute, every government institute, this is the situation. So please understand. According to them, uh, uh, we have to have a strict payment structure like uh, paying the whole thing at one time. That is the best structure or paying the whole, especially for the MSc people, the paying the in two installments is the is the regular plan that we are, we are thinking. So in uh, paying in two installments, uh, but for certain uh, board of studies uh, that is going for more than one year, so they have uh, thought about, uh, they have requested and got the approval for payments in three installments. The MBA program uh, is designed for two years. And uh, so the coursework, so they pay in four installments. Uh, students like to pay like 10,000, 10,000, 10,000 like that. And uh, which uh, we cannot actually do and uh, so this is a, a kind of an issue. So we have discussed with the banks <clears throat> and uh, uh, the three banks have so far agreed. And uh, these names are there. Please write down these names. You can get credit cards. 
from uh, talking to them and just showing your id and say that you are a pg student we have personal discussions with them and they have discussed with their general management uh, and uh, uh, we have discussed with their general management and uh, uh, so um, uh, so they can um, uh, they are happy to help you with uh, coming up with these uh, credit cards and everything and if you have issues you can let us know that if they reject your application or something please let us know and so that uh, we can communicate with them and see why they have rejected so what the, what they do is like once you get this credit card so they can actually uh, uh, they can actually uh, uh, the credit with the credit card they pay the amount in full when they pay the amount for like 150000 they pay the amount in full when a student pays the amount 150000 in full or 125 or whatever the amount in full we give a 10 percent discount because that helps a lot that helps a lot uh, for the for the admin uh, procedures and the financial procedures so we give it a 10 percent means about 15000 they get back so this credit card people get that 15000 back as their interest so you don't have to pay any interest you are only paying 150000 and uh, the pga out of that pga takes 135 and give that 15 back to the the credit card company and so they don't charge any more interest from you and the advantage is like you can pay something like 10000 or 9000 monthly installments you can pay for like 12 uh, months or something like 24 months and make the whole payment of this one and you can use this credit card for your other things like buying vegetables or grocery or something as well but that is not advised to do that one uh, the upper limit is about 150,000 because that is designed for this purpose but if you have made all that payments and uh, now the credit card is kind of free for you then you can use it for other purpose as well because you have this 150,000 upper limit so you can use it for other people, but use it wisely. And this is just the opportunity for you. So with all these facilities, sometimes they give student loans as well. If you talk to People's Bank and people, they are willing to give loans as well for you on a very low interest. And because of these things, uh, uh, we feel like uh, there is no real excuse for students for not being able to make payments. If they are, uh, still have issues, you can communicate with us and uh, we can actually try to sort matters with you all this time okay so the the couple of other things that a uh, lot of uh, students ask is about these different degree programs and the different names of these degree programs and uh, so of course everybody knows the msc degrees are there infield degrees are there phds are there mbas are there dba is the doctor of business administration okay so uh, usually, the now the Sri Lanka, the UGC has uh, come up with the Sri Lanka qualification framework. Uh, they have worked with the World Bank and for a long time, for like uh, since like about 2010, I think. And now they have established this qualification framework. So all the universities and uh, who should be abide by these uh, these guidelines. Sri Lanka qualification framework is SLQF guidelines. If you go. If you type SLQF guidelines Sri Lanka, you can get the document from the web. All this information is in the web. All the things that I talked so far are in the web, in our PGIA web, and in the student handbook and in the prospectus. So please visit those things. Please visit. Please don't just stay like a lazy as a lazy student or as a passive student. You are most of you are professionals. So please uh, do some active search and get actively get going and get the best out of this uh, opportunity. The SLQF uh, guidelines are not in the PGI website, but they are in the uh, UGC website. So you can search for them. What they mean is like this uh, one year masters. They call one year masters, minimum one year you have to spend. It is about uh, 30 credit, 30 credits. Uh, five credits is for a small kind of a research, like many people do in the undergrad level, uh, final year uh, sim, uh, research. Like that it's a little bit more advanced than that but it's a uh, count to five credits and so they have to do 25 credits of coursework which if you are like a full-time uh, student uh, taking the whole course load you can finish it in one year but uh, maximum five years are given for you to finish if you are otherwise uh, we kind of take you out from the system because we cannot 
keep you above with the with the financial obligations and we cannot show the income recognition and the accountability so after five years you are out this is called SLQF level nine now the four-year degree undergrad degree is SLQF level eight three-year degree is SLQF level seven seven like that uh, so this is uh, level nine and uh, if you do a like one-year coursework with the one-year research one-year coursework is 30 credits 30 credits of coursework with one year research that is called level 10 masters that is called level 10 masters so this involves 30 credits of coursework so this uh, level nine months you have to do only 25 credits plus a small research component for these 30 credit people are doing this one year research so they don't have to do this five credit uh, small research so it is uh, so that they are not doing this uh, five credit directed study, this small research, they are doing this one year big research. So for that, uh, for this one, so they are, because of that, they have to complete this 30 credits of coursework. So they are doing the, this and nine, level nine people are doing 25 credits, level 10 people have to do 30 credits of coursework. Uh, actually, if you are doing full time with the full load, uh, Saturday, Sunday, mostly uh, full load, morning till evening, morning till evening, eight to five, eight to five, Saturday, Sunday, Saturday, Sunday, then you can cover all these courses in like one year. In one year, definitely you can cover the whole thing. The <coughs> excuse me. The two names are now different. This is not PGIA. This is not PGIA trying to screw up. This is what the SLQF is is asking all the universities, all the graduate programs everywhere uh, is supposed to do. Uh, level nine is called masters. Level ten is called MSc. Level nine is called master's, level 10 is called MSc. The, so the level nine degree, for example, for example, biotechnology, I'm not, not trying to isolate one degree here at all. For example, biotechnology, the level nine one is called master of biotechnology. And for the level 10, level 10, that is a two year one. Two year means like you have to do 30 credits plus one year research. One year research may drag on for a long time, may go for more than one year because of the COVID situation and everything. You are given a total of six years to complete. If you plan and design and do it very well, you can complete in two years. But the research, the starting date of the research and the end date of research must have this uh, one year period. Uh, you cannot submit the thesis with six month research. This should be one year. So. Uh, you are given a maximum of six years. So with that, uh, the, your thesis is sent for outside examiners, uh, just like MPhil and PhD, and they evaluate it, and then you will have a thesis defense examination. Then you have to come, uh, incorporate all their suggestions. Then you have to bind the thesis and submit the thesis. And, uh, and then you are given MSc in biotechnology, like MPhil in a PhD in like that one. So this is the one now according to the SLK web, they want PGIA and all the other PG institutes to abide by this norm. So this is really confusing for these, uh, these uh, young people. I know many of you have got mixed up uh, when you are making that application because uh, they have not come up with a really nice different name for this one. This one is also master. This one is also master, but this one is called MSc. And this one called this one called MSc. This one this one called MSc. This one called Master of Biotech or something. So it is not MSc. Unfortunately, they, oh, fortunately, this is the situation that the UGC has adopted so far. After so many discussions and everything, now we have to abide by this situation. So if you have accidentally registered for the other program, don't worry at all. Don't worry at all. Just send send us an email. Uh, send to me an email. Uh, my email is. DIR, director, DIR, DIR at PGIA, DIR at PGIA.ac.lk. Just send us and don't worry at all. Uh, we will uh, quickly move from uh, your correct one into the sun. Please tell which one you like. Please tell whether you like uh, one year or two year MSc. Please tell. And uh, when you are going through the program, if you are in the uh, one year program, and if you want to move on to this two year, you feel like I'm doing the coursework. I actually want to do this one year research as well. And uh, I'm interested, I have a research grant. You can upgrade. You can make a request during the middle of the period. Anytime during the middle of the period, you can ask to upgrade. Then we ask you to, okay, we ask you to uh, give a concept paper. 
just a synopsis you know, saying like this is the kind of research you want to do. And then uh, we ask you to, we assign a, a professor for you, a teacher for you as an interim supervisor. And uh, you will sit with that person and develop the proposal fully and see whether there is any possibility to get some funding. And then you have to present it to the board of study and the board of study will correct it and uh, give you suggestions to revise it and accept it. And you have to submit the revised proposal. This is for this research and the MPhils and PAD also. They have to submit the concept paper. All these research groups, people, they have to submit the concept paper and we appoint an interim supervisor. So with the application, you submit the concept paper which saying like, okay, this is the type of research I want to do. Then uh, if it is relevant to the board of study, if it is uh, good enough for a master's level, then the board approves and uh, gives you suggestions to make it better. And then you, after the submitting the revised proposal back to us, you start the work and you continue with the supervisory panel. We appoint you a supervisory panel with a major supervisor and one or two other supervisors. And you have to meet with them regularly. And every six months we have a progress meeting to make sure that you are all in the right track and sort out all your issues. And you have to give six month progress reports. And that's how the whole process works for even for MPLs and PADs as well. So if you are doing MSc coursework and research, and if you want to go to MPhil level, uh, you can ask to upgrade as well from the MSc to MPhil. Or even from MPhil student, if you want to go to PhD level, you can upgrade about after one year. Uh, you cannot directly register for PhD unless you have first class. Unless you have, that is SLQF. SLQF says don't get students to PhD directly unless they have a first class. So they can come into masters and complete a master. So start as an MPhil by research. This is totally by research. Start as an MPhil by research. And after one year of completion, they can show the progress and, uh, and uh, give an expanded proposal for a PhD because PhD is minimum three years. MPhil is minimum two year research. This is three year research. So you have to expand the, uh, this one, the proposal and uh, present it to the board. And the board has to, board of study has to accept it and uh, appoint new supervisors or existing supervisors. And then you can continue to do a PhD. So if you really want to do a PhD and don't have an undergrad, uh, or don't have a master's degree and don't have a first class, you can start with MPhil. Start with MPhil. And after one year, we will evaluate you and move up to PhD. Again, like when you are in the PhD and if you have difficulty with the COVID and everything and you want to downgrade, you can of course downgrade to MPhil and those MPhils who want to downgrade to MSc can do it. MSc course can research if you are if you are eager and started this way with the one year research and later you find, oh my God, this is too much for me. I cannot do no money. I cannot do traveling. I, my job is to, uh, as difficult. You can, of course, ask in the middle of the program to downgrade into this one. Uh, usually the money involved is like if the this level nine one is 150,000, then there is an extra one lakh. Uh, so it will become uh, 250,000 for this MSCs, MPhils. And for PhDs, it is a 350,000. So if you are not 100% sure about your MSc, don't pay the whole 250,000. Don't pay the whole 250,000. Pay the 150,000. Pay the 150,000 and go on with your credits and uh, the research work. And if you find it difficult, uh, if you find it difficult, then ask to downgrade it to the one year so that you can use that 150,000. You can use that 150,000 and complete the master's. If you, when you do this program and when you become like, if you are registered for level 10 and after about one year now, if you feel like uh, I can go for the research now, I'm doing well, uh, then you must pay the extra one lakh, then pay the extra one lakh. Because uh, we have this non-refund uh, policy that is uh, the treasury and the ministry want us to maintain that uh, non-refund uh, double policy. So that means like if you pay 250,000, uh, we cannot give that one, one lakh back to you when you downgrade. Uh, this is the issue. So don't pay that one until you are sure. Until you are sure, just pay 150,000 and register. And when you understand the workload, when you get your research part all formalized, when you know that I can definitely do this research, pay that 150,000 and uh, move on to this one. So any other question we can uh, answer. So these are the, right now we are at the prerequisite level. So uh, from uh, 20 February to 27 March, the prerequisite courses are basic mathematics, basic stat and 
some other prerequisites are there for each board of study. So please check, please check with your board of study whether you need aquaculture, whether you need any kind of uh, uh, prerequisite uh, because your background is not good, because your background is not very strong. You don't have B or above grades for the stat or math and uh, some uh, boards don't have this mathematics requirement. Some boards don't have the stat requirement. Some boards don't have math or stat requirement at all. But some boards, uh, for some boards like engineering uh, and stat like boards, these are compulsory. So you are supposed to do these things. Now these course will, so from, uh, uh, actually this is not uh, 20th February, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, this is not 20th, we start on 26th February. Initially we started with 20th, but uh, now uh, we moved to 26th. So we are going to start it 26th of February, next Saturday. All these people who are supposed to do prerequisite, please register. Please register, otherwise you will not get the links. And it will go for like a Saturday, Sunday, Saturday, Sunday, Saturday, Sunday, Saturday, Sunday, morning uh, four hours, afternoon four hours, usually like Saturday morning, eight to 12, uh, basic stat, then one to five is basic math. And Sunday morning, eight to 12, basic math, and afternoon, <coughs> basic stat. Like that, we will go for four weeks. And uh, fifth week, we have the uh, we have the exam. So this is not actually eight weeks. This eight week is also again wrong. Uh, this is five weeks. This program is only for five weeks only. So prerequisites are five weeks. Then the first semester begins on 28th March. So you can discuss with the board of uh, studies how they put the timetables on where are they going to put the timetables. Earlier they put the timetables in the PGIA, but now students are not coming to PGIA. So how they will get to know all this information and how to register for the courses, how to get the Zoom links from them so that you will not miss any of those uh, opportunities from the beginning. The course usually is designed for like 16 weeks, but sometimes it goes for about 18 weeks. And uh, we have the new year vacation plan from 11 to 17 April in the middle of this one. And in the middle of this one, from March to August, we have this progress presentations for this uh, research students, uh, MPhil, PhD, and MSc course work and research people. And the second semester is supposed to start at 15th August if there is no delay. All these registrations and MIS, all these things are online. I think uh, Mr. Hemajit, our system analyst, will talk to you briefly about MIS. He's not feeling well today, so he's in another place, but he will be coughing a little bit, but he will be uh, uh, telling you about the MIS. And if you have any question, feel free to ask all these questions from him. That session will be only about 10 minutes after my presentation. So you have to make sure you have to go to the, the web. Uh, the web has the updated uh, student handbook uh, for 2022. And uh, and uh, the PGIA prospectus is there. It shows what are the compulsory courses that you have to do. And there are many optional courses listed. So altogether, we have about 36 uh, courses usually about listed and you only need 30 you only need 30 and uh, so you have to take the all the compulsories and some optionals and you all can discuss and decide okay these are the optionals that we are going to do together together when you do together it's easier so one credit is 15 now 15 hours is like uh, if if the term goes for 15 weeks if the term goes for 15 weeks let's say like if you are registering for a course on saturday Saturday 8 to 9, Saturday 8 to 9, Saturday 8 to 9, Saturday 8 to 9 for 15 weeks, that is one credit. So if your uh, particular course is a two credit course, a two credit course, and uh, that means like 8 to 10, Saturday 8 to 10, Saturday 8 to 10, Saturday 8 to 10, Saturday 8 to 10, 15 weeks, that become 30 hours. So 30 lecture hours is two credits. Uh, if it is a three credit course, you may, they will plan for three hours uh, in the timetable, every week, three hours like that. So if you uh, register for like uh, eight to 12 uh, in the timetable on Saturday and one to five on Saturday, that is about eight hours. So eight hours means altogether uh, eight cred uh, uh, credits you will, you will be getting eight credits you will be getting because 15 weeks, eight hours, 15 weeks, you will get eight credits because 15 hours is one credit. And if you do uh, Sunday also, uh, eight to 12, uh, that will be another four credits, four hours. And then uh, one hour is one credit per week. 
and then uh, saturday afternoon 1 to 4 you register for another three you have seven so all together sunday seven uh, saturday eight all together you get 15 credits if you get 15 credits on first semester second semester you only need 10 credits and then your 25 is complete so you can see if you do full time like a full load you can complete in one year otherwise you, it may take little longer so we give a's and b's and everything the f is uh, zero the c is given at two and uh, a is four this is how the grade points are there i think a lot of students know these things uh, if you want to pass a particular course you should get c or above otherwise you have to redo it redo it if you with f grades you cannot graduate with incompletes you cannot graduate you need to pass this one and uh, if you have a lot of c minuses and c plus your average or grade point average will be much lower uh, then you need all these a c minuses and things because your total average total average we call grade point average or gpa must be about 3 to graduate must be about 3 to graduate if you could not reach 3 after you are 25 and uh, you want to quit uh, because you are only like somewhere around 2.75 to 3 If you are 2.75 to 3, 2.75 to 3, and you have completed your uh, coursework of 25 credits, you can request for postgraduate diploma. You can request for postgraduate diploma, and uh, so that is the the basic situation. So after finishing, if your GPA is not above three, then I think you can take this one. And uh, if your GPA is not above three, because because of the Cs and C pluses, you can take them again. you can take them again and the, but the maximum grade you will get is b but b is 3 so it will take you about the 3 so you can if you get b minus c plus s and c is and your gpa is less uh, than 3 if it is more than 3 then you don't have to worry if it is less than 3 then uh, uh, you have to retake them and get at least a b the maximum we give is b for the repeat exams the second time round Okay, so all these student requests that you want to do, a lot of students don't even write their names. They don't write their registration number. They don't write their board of study, even the degree of program or contact number. Nothing. Usually, they just send the email. So because of this issue, we have the student request forms. You can download this one, and uh, you can uh, um, uh, from the web. Uh, if you go to this website, you can take them down. And uh, you can just uh, don't have to remember this one. You can go to www.pji.lsk. and you can go to the files and all this is student information all the student information yeah go to the web please go to the web please search please be responsible and then get all these uh, formats and uh, then you can write so that we know necessarily you will fill your contact number so at least when your english is poor or when you write something totally we cannot understand we can at least contact you and get the web, get and what to do so if it is something that pgi can do we will attend to it directly if it is something that board of study has to do then you have to wait for this uh, the board of studies are held meetings are held in every two months so you will have to wait a little bit for this one so this is the student handbook so you can uh, it is in the web the updated version is in the web and uh, it has all the information uh, please please go through that one uh, if you have a difficulty coming for the examinations or coming to the classes especially examinations and then um, if you want uh, this will be, uh, it will be usually considered as a repeat examination uh, but uh, if you give a valid medical certificate valid medical certificate then uh, uh, you can be considered as a proper exam then uh, uh, in your uh, next attempt uh, you will get a proper grade like a or b otherwise you will not get a grades maximum you will get is b so you have to provide this one so if you get it from an ayurvedic doctor that is not good if you get it from some uh, private person uh, by pay money that is not good uh, the best thing is to get from a university health center or the dmo district medical or any kind of a consultant medical student, uh, or the head of the government based hospital we send this one to our health center and our chief medical officer certifies them then they are considered as the board of management considers this one as proper so these little things you should know and uh, these numbers are also in the web uh, mr damunupala uh, he is also having an mba these are uh, the uh, the people with uh, masters degrees is uh, is dr at pgiacl deputy registrar 
Uh, Mr. Hemijit will talk to you. System analyst is SC. And um, so Navada Bandarnaka is now not there, but uh, now it's uh, Miss Virashmi. And we have given the Virashmi's numbers to you. And Miss Swarna is the, is the clerk. And Mr. Kumara, you already have probably spoken to him. Uh, so, and uh, so, that, uh, so they are in the admin branch and they are helpful and they are very busy with a lot of student phone calls, but uh, take down their numbers, uh, Mr. Kumar and uh, Ms. Swarna's numbers, and you can talk to them. Uh, Note 716-280-287. Note 716-280-287. So that is the one. And uh, with, the, with this one, admin branch uh, with Swarna, you can talk to this number as well. And uh, not 713-620-963. These are very, very experienced uh, clerks. They are clerks. They, are, they don't have masters. They are clerks. And uh, our PGIA coordinator, Hemajit and uh, Dhamanupala, they have master's degrees. Okay, so what are you supposed to do? And uh, do, please don't stay like haphazard saying like, I thought this way, I got this way, I didn't know, I didn't get this. All these kind of things, I didn't know the rules, I thought, uh, all these kind of things that some of you may have been doing in your whole life. This is your second opportunity. Some of you, I know when you are doing A-level, you are the best students in the country. And uh, so, but when they, you come to university, sometimes you end up with general degrees or uh, second lowers, uh, partly because it was like you just gave it up. But this is your second chance to get all your uh, straight A's and uh, get the real knowledge. Because at your... Uh, undergrad level, you probably went to the wrong faculty because the UGC put you into the faculty according to your qualifications and the competition. But now you select, you decide, you think about your career path. So you cannot just say, I just came here to just to get this three letter MSc. That you cannot say like that. And you have to really, this. Uh, you are getting a driver's license, not just to get the driver's license. You are getting a driver's license for to drive. Uh, uh, you are getting that driver's license to are at end again. So uh, you are getting that driver's license, and uh, uh, then uh, uh, not to just keep it in the in the in the framed one, in the laminated one, but to drive, just to drive. So don't think that you are just cheating or getting shortcuts or just uh, going online or just uh, submitting something is good. Uh, this is actually, if you become the really good, the knowledge is power. So if you are really good, uh, then you can really shine well and you can move forward and you will be happy. Your family will be happy. You will be happy about yourself and that will again, re-motivate yourself to go get into this positive cycle and move forward. So this is your second chance. So get organized. I know some of you have family, some of your children, some of you have work to do. Some of you have started the jobs early. So this uh, having the Saturdays have to work, Sundays have to work. So you really have to plan, you really have to plan. This is not like undergraduate degrees that you get initially that 100% uh, time you are in the hostels and doing everything very, very leisurely. This is not like this. This is tough work. Try to understand the PGIA, the whole system. Don't say, I don't know, don't say, I don't know. Understand the whole culture, how the PGIA is working. So in the beginning, it would be this. And so please read the handbook and all the other guidelines are posted in the web. Please visit web. Please, it is so easy. You are spending so much time on Facebooks, WhatsApps, and all these other things. Please visit this website and see whether there's anything. Uh, go to the student section of the PGI website and try to see whether you can do it. Learn all about these calendar dates, deadlines, uh, the lockdown situations of the country. We sent messages. We are going to take your phone numbers and we are going to, we will have our SMS system uh, established so that all these messages will come to you as SMS, some of them, but some of them will come to you as emails. So please check your email. Some people have given hotmail to us and they just check only their Gmail and they say, we didn't get the message. These are frequent complaints. This is really bad. And please, if you give one particular email to PGIA, we are only sending to that email. Please check. Please say, don't say, I didn't get it. I didn't get it and all those things. So in this afternoon, you have, will have the opportunity to meet with others. Please arrange uh, somebody like a batch rep or, or a person uh, who is really responsible and who is really organized and who will really communicate with individual teachers. And when a teacher wants to give a message, uh, please understand how the teacher gives the message. Is, it, is he giving it to the batch rep? 
Oh, so that the batch rep tells the whole WhatsApp group, or oh, he's posting some things in the MIS, or oh, he, uh, oh, he's uh, posting things in your Google group. Whatever the method that you are planning to use, please make sure that the, all this communication system is established because you are alone at your different places. So in the afternoon, please spend time with your teachers and uh, with among yourselves and establish uh, your email system. Your, if you are planning like a WhatsApp group, arrange a WhatsApp group. Please be responsible. Please don't say uh, my, my phone doesn't have WhatsApp. Then get a phone. If you don't have a calculator, get a calculator because without this, you, uh, you need a, a laptop. You really need a laptop. You need a camera. You need a very strong online connection, either at the office or at home with a dongle or landline, get something get something this is essential otherwise you will never be able to do it during the lightning during this uh, uh, the power outages you need backups you need backups this uh, power outages happen all the time uh, there will be electricity power cuts coming in but uh, when one area has power cuts the lectures will go on and you will have difficulty so please get ready with all those things get your battery charged have a laptop and get something uh, going. Some people are just using mobiles and that is not really advisable. And when you are doing an examination, we want your cameras to be on. Cameras to be on all the time. So you can, uh, you, you must arrange all these things and make all the payments. To least don't say, I don't know and everything. And uh, so make all arrangements to make all these payments and register for the courses. Just don't say, I added this one accidentally, I dropped this one. Now, after some add drop period, MIS does not let you, uh, uh, MIS does not let you uh, add in on. Then you have to let us know why uh, it is not letting you on. Without you being in the MIS, without registering for a course, the teacher cannot uh, submit marks because your name doesn't show in the MIS. So you cannot say, I didn't know, and I added this course mistakenly. All those things you have to regularly check because we cannot check those things. You are not here. We are not here to see your grievances. We don't see you interactively. We don't see you. Usually like in the on-ground classes, we interact with you. We go during the class break, we go and have a cup of tea and come back. All these things we do. But here now we cannot, so we cannot individually talk to you very much. It's limited, so it's all up to you to make sure that you are on the proper ones. When the grades are submitted, please check whether your grade is there and the way the other grades are there, whether there are any discrepancies, don't come and say like, this is incomplete, this is well, um, my one is not there. Please check, please don't wait till the 19th. And the academic honesty, the plagiarism, all these things are serious, 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 serious issues. And uh, so in an examination, you cannot just go to uh, some people give in the online, some people give something called open book exams, open book exams means open book exams means uh, the you can you have access to all these books and notes and everything. So the exam questions are not from the notes, obviously they are not from the notes open book exams are very open because you cannot ask the same question, uh, which is written in the notes. So you, you have to ask a different question, something like a synthesizing kind of question. So like a consult, make a, become like a, act like an advisor and write a report or become a consultant and give you a views on something like a critically explain, like something like this. And so you have to use all this knowledge and write down uh, the information. So within a particular period of time, like two hours or one and a half hours or, or three hours during this time, so open books exams are sometimes much more creative and much more difficult to set up and much more difficult to do because even though you have information, you should know the information and you should write it according to the question. If some people just write whatever the things in the notes and that is not according to the question and you will not get the marks. Because notes, of course, anybody can write. Some people write the same thing that is in the PowerPoint slide. You will not get marks. You have to answer according to the question. Like if the question asks you to uh, you know, critically analyze or critically review or something like that, you no, know, describe, then just uh, putting the points in the PowerPoint is not going to take you anywhere. So open book exams are difficult. And some people quickly go to the internet uh, and uh, copy some of these things word by word and put it there. Those are wrong. This is called plagiarism. That's called plagiarism. We can, the system can kick you out. If you, uh, if you, if we, 
uh, catch you and put you into this uh, complaint to the Senate, the Senate will uh, you know, decide that your studentship is abolished. So, so dishonesty, academic dishonesty is a big thing. When you write something down, the teacher can type the same sentence in the Google and the Google will tell that where you actually got it from. We can check the plagiarism. Uh, we have the plagiarism dossier. So you can uh, go to this, get this different access, but you have to write in your own words. Get the message, write in your own words, write in your own words. And don't stay like a lackadaisical, just say like, I just did it because I want to get this EBA situation. Actually, I want to, we want to uh, do this one just to get the knowledge. Get the knowledge means knowledge is power, knowledge is recognition, knowledge is self-esteem, knowledge is self-confidence, knowledge is your career, knowledge is your the financial gains, monetary gains, the success in your business adventures, and in everything as well in the family. Even your children will see how hard you study, and they will study hard by looking uh, by following a parent. Even your younger brothers, younger sisters will do that. So this happens a lot. Even when you do this one well your colleagues will start doing master's ourselves. This is, this is becoming a positive cycle. So don't just, just, just get onto your feet, get onto your feet and get this motivation. This is a one year work or maximum two years. So get it going and make sure that I am proud because now this, this uh, next week, as I said, uh, 22nd, 23rd, 23rd, I am sitting at the stage in the convocation and uh, we, we really like to see that you graduate and we like to see you garlanding and getting photographs with us and with your parents. That will be a very happy occasion, a memorable time. So these are the positive things. This is the light at the end of the tunnel. So getting involved, uh, networking among student population is very important for you. So get involved in all the PGIA events. We will organize the PGIA uh, days and uh, MBA nights, uh, Paduru parties and uh, voluntary activities. Uh, we have something called PASA postgraduate agriculture student association you can get involved they have blood donation campaigns blood donation uh, donation campaigns a book donation campaigns all these kind of different activities they do we organize webinars we send all the links to you all the links the webinar links uh, to you and uh, uh, try to get involved when somebody is doing a MPhil PhD thesis defense uh, or, PH, uh, or MPhil uh, thesis defense or PhD thesis defense. They have something called public seminar for 30 minutes or one hour. Please, uh, we send those uh, links to every student. Try to join and try to see or learn from the others' mistakes or learn from the, the good point from the others. Get involved, get connected and get the interactive and get these things going. And so once you are hooked up to the system and you are really into the system when you are connected many things will happen many positive things will happen to you you will get to know a lot of information you will not not miss the news you will get to know these things so have fun doing those things i am having fun uh, you know uh, working with you i'm very happy i'm so pleased that we did aggressive campaigning uh, to get more students now we have about more than uh, uh, 600 uh, applications coming in from all over the country and even from abroad and uh, we have from SAC and other places the people are applying. So, so it's it's great to see that we are really contributed to the manpower development. So I'm talking to you with fun. We work hard, we play hard, we enjoy the life. We work hard when we do uh, research and when we publish a paper, we are happy. We are happy. We do this one positively. We take this into life into positive cycle. Try to get the life back into positive cycle so that everything is rewarding to us. Some frustrations are there, all these kind of things are, but that's how when you're playing a cricket match, it's hard. You dive for the ball, you work hard, you bowl hard, you hit hard. It's tiring, but it's fun. It's fun. Try to make this one into fun thing and try to get the best out of it. Give the best shot that you got. I think if you give the best shot, I have seen students like even my batchmates who are like uh, doing just getting general passes, but coming to PGIA, getting ace, 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 and four point GPA. And now they are like professors in, in Canada. Because once you do a, a straight A, so very good at the master's level, we can uh, give you recommendation letters. And people from outside, uh, like uh, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, uh, USA, all these places, they will, they will Japan, they will take uh, you. They will take you for PhDs. And we can strongly recommend. So anybody who wants to do further, that does not depend on your undergraduate uh, results. Many people who got PhDs don't have undergraduate first classes. 
who undergo it upwards many many of them in the latter part of their life they are late bloomers they get phd's while some of these second upper first classes end up uh, having babies and 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 sitting there at home so don't stick to this and don't uh, let any of these thing uh, point to this a new beginning i hope you can go further so this is where we will be uh, in the weeks time so go to google in uh, february 23rd i will be standing up reading the names we have about uh, more than 300 students graduating more than 350 students graduating with phd's msc's and mphil's and i will be the happiest to call all the all your names correctly and uh, all that your teachers are attending this one and uh, they are sitting at the backstage uh, with us and it will be youtube live telecast so this is our happiness that all these products that we are doing these are permanent when they go out to the world to the uh, country they will be taking up higher positions you will be taking up higher positions because all your director generals and others will be retiring and you are slowly moving up to those positions that has happened every time every time it happens so if you hang on and do well you uh, you know sky is the limit and you can go on so thank you very much uh, and congratulations and i want to thank the board of study members uh, the teachers who are just uh, listening to this one um, um they know all the what i am saying but they just want to know what the points that i made so that they don't have to repeat those points for, for their board of study let's go to the question and answer sessions uh, so some people are asking whether you can do a double msc no uh, right now no that's called concurrent uh, registration so uh, jalani pradeepa has said so i want to select masters of course yes uh, you can contact and if you want to change from msc to a two year to one year you can do that uh, and uh, you can uh, ask them we we will switch it to you talk to kumara and kumara will switch it to you and uh, the switch the application to the other program and uh, make the correct payment make the correct payment if you have done a wrong payment uh, please talk to us early right now so that we will rectify that one uh, talk to us uh, right away Uh, without letting uh, you know without waiting for one week just let us know is the whole msc program going to be completely online uh, right now we don't want that way actually most teachers like interactively want to talk to you because when they talk to you uh, then only we realize where you are where you are and then we usually tune into your situation and sometimes come down little bit sometimes go little faster de- depending on you uh, how you catch it up so in the online situation it's going to be quite difficult most students don't want to turn it on they are they are in a very noisy atmosphere and you can hear the mosque sounds the dog barking sounds all kind of things so a lot of them are reluctant to turn their mics on so the interactions are much limited but we encourage the teachers to go get into this interactive mode uh, uh, mostly but uh, so we do not like online but right now the demand is to go for online so the question is whether it will be completely online but if the situation gets better uh, i don't know what happens in uh, august whether there will be another new strain or whether this will totally die down uh, our main target is to, to do it on ground so as time goes as time goes we reevaluate each teacher reevaluate the situation discussing with the students sometimes moving into total online sometimes moving into hybrid mode or sometimes moving back into on ground uh, most teachers prefer on ground examinations so that they can give close book examinations and they can attend to that they can check then they can make sure that the student the examination is held in a proper manner controlled proper manner so the answer to this one i don't know i don't know means like we don't know uh, because we wo- we may want to maintain the quality so we like on ground but if the situation keep obstructing us that it it keeps us from from having this uh, online uh, on ground situation we will continue online we will continue online we will not stop uh, no matter what kind of a lockdown situation we will continue the programs online all the courses will be delivered in one year and uh, complete so everything will be complete in one year exams may take little bit uh, time because some teachers might think like uh, let's wait a little bit to have an on ground exam like that exams may take little bit but the courses will complete 
all the courses. So if the situation does not prevail on ground situation, everything will be online. So otherwise, we may go into hybrid mode or on ground. So I want to select master's coursework and why I have only paid, uh, I have already paid money for master's and uh, change into master's. Yeah, uh, Jalani, you can definitely do that and you can uh, change it. Uh, please talk to, uh, uh, please take to Mr. Kumar and uh, get it changed. And uh, if you have paid more, we will uh, refund. Uh, please send the email, uh, please send it to dir at pgiaclk and the deputy register also dr at pjaaclk and also to kumara kumara at pjaaclk so is it possible to uh, do a mpil while doing msc no uh, that's called concurrent registration you cannot do two things these are considered as full time and uh, mpil full time two year research so unfortunately you cannot do that one and a uh, lot of these mscs are now not sufficient for you to, these are good questions. The, for this MSCs are not sufficient you to uh, become senior lecturer. You need an MPhil or PhD. So if you are registered for MSc, one year coursework, one year research, uh, that is not enough right now for confirmation uh, of the lecturer post or for, to become a senior lecturer. This is a big issue for the agriculture sector for the agriculture sector and some engineering, like some fields. Certain fields, uh, this two year MSc is enough. For certain fields, two year MSc, this is a UGC circular. I think it's 2016 or something. And uh, please check that UGC circular because this, uh, if you want to become a senior lecturer or get the confirmation uh, in agriculture, so far it's M field. I discussed this one with the UGC uh, even uh, last week. And uh, so we are trying to change the circular, but so far circular is not changed. So two year MSc will not give you confirmation and if you are in the agriculture field. How to pay the prerequisite exams if it is not included the paying voucher. Okay, so talk to the uh, Kumar and ask uh, how much to pay and uh, um, you can write it down and pay. There is no problem at all. Uh, you can write write it down saying that for prerequisites and you can pay. Doesn't matter at all. And uh, you can inform and send uh, send uh, you a slip to here. Uh, I am Saranand lecture. I have submitted uh, unofficial transcript. I have requested my unit to send the official transcript. And so after this, in, so yeah, uh, so several students have this issue that they have asked their universities like uh, in different universities to send the transcript, but they have not sent the transcripts. They have not sent the transcripts yet. So please communicate with them until that time you can continue. You can continue as a, we call you as a provisional student, provisional student, but you will get the links. If you don't get the links, please let us know. We will make sure you get the links. I have given all the phone numbers to contact, contact at least one person and say like, you are not getting the links, others are getting the link. So just talk to us and uh, we will, we, we can, you can continue. You can continue. We usually give about one month or two for you to continue at the pre, uh, because it is not your fault, is that university is not sending. So uh, just uh, try to push it from the university to get it. But uh, after one month, two months like time, if you continue to stay like this one, then uh, there will be a problem. There will be a problem. But right now you can follow the prerequisite courses and the uh, regular courses uh, as a provisional student. So that is the question a lot of students. I want to change my postgraduate degree area, Master of Science too. Um, okay, so that is that can be done. Please uh, talk to Kumar. If you want to change from one MSc to other thing, do it in a hurry, just tell them so that we will cut the uh, it in your application and correct it as the right degree and we will send it to the right board of study and get the approval then you can go on can we jump from uh, masters to msc after completing masters uh, uh, not after completing masters after completing masters uh, before completing masters you have to upgrade after completing masters it is done it's finished then you cannot up upgrade but uh, during that one you have to you have to move on during that one, you have to move on. And uh, otherwise, I mean, you cannot get like two degrees, like MSc uh, coursework and MSc coursework and research, like two degrees. You have to get, if it is, you are doing only two years, you should get only the second degree, the two year degree, not the first, uh, not both degrees. You cannot get both degrees. So you have to upgrade it. So you have to ask. So 
at the end of one year msc we have something called uh, or, or that uh, two year msc we have something called comprehensive examination in the comprehensive examination there will be a external and internal panel of teachers five teachers they will ask kind of like uh, synthesizing type of questions from you from uh, about applications and uh, whether you can you can integrate all your knowledge coming from the first semester to second semester to all of those things whether you can put them together and come up with some uh, real life questions and with the real life answers uh, that is the idea of becoming a professional so they, it's a comprehensive examination and you have to pass that one once you pass the comprehensive examination then you cannot jump from one degree to the other degree before the comprehensive you can jump but after the comprehensive you cannot jump so both uh, one year and two year msc's have these comprehensive examinations they are based on the courses but based on the general knowledge based on your ability to apply the knowledge from the courses please explain the professional type of student how long time they have to submit for the because final year students need time for senate approval research they will give the transcript yeah um, but i think uh, so far if you have any uh, this is from uh, mahadevan uh, uh, if the mahadevan has uh, some issues please let us know which university which faculty whether they have convocations and we we don't need uh, the uh, convocation we don't need graduation one what we need is a uh, transcript i think if the faculty board has has uh, held if the results board had been held for the final year students then the assistant registrar or the senior assistant registrar of the faculty faculty can give us the transcript the degree certificate uh, with that gold color degree certificate comes from the convocation we don't uh, we don't need that we don't need that one uh, the, that one if you have that is nice you can give it to us but the convocations will be held much much later convocation will be held much much later we, we can you can get going with the you can get going with the official transcript coming from the faculty from the dean and the assistant registrar that's all we we you need right now to get going that's all you need to write and get going if you have the had the results board there is no excuse for the faculty to net send this one but unfortunately some faculties i don't want to mention the names are very slow in sending the transcripts this is why we give a couple of months for you to send it so push them to get these things through but you can still continue your work here as a provisional student okay so MPL is a full time or not? Okay, anonymous attendee. I don't know why you are anonymous attendee. Uh, you don't have to be anonymous. Um, M you have you have a very good question. MPL is considered as a full time. It's considered as a full time, but you can do it on part time. This is why MPL degree officially is for two year full time research, two year full time research, or equivalent, or equivalent. So if you are doing part time, it may take more than two years. If you are doing part time, it may take more than two years for you to do it. It may take more than two years for you to do it. So uh, it usually, sometimes this, due to these COVID situations and field work and droughts and uh, all these kind of things, uh, infills take low, uh, more than two years. But you are given about uh, seven years to complete the infill. Uh, please check. Uh, I'm not sure whether it is seven or six. I think it's seven years. Uh, given for you to complete the MPhil degree, and when there is a COVID lockdown and outbreaks, we usually the board of management give you extra time. Once you finish the work within that time, if you couldn't finish the work, then you you get nothing. And then uh, you have to send a, a valid uh, excuse uh, beforehand and uh, ask for a special extension. I don't know about that one very much. Meaning, like a lot of students don't send that way because they have six years to complete. And we have progress presentations every semester, so we can kind of see where you are going, where you are going. And uh, so, if things don't move, you can quit. Or otherwise, uh, the, we can make sure you are going forward processly. When you are uh, when you are finished, we don't ch uh, check whether you went for three years or four years or five years. When we send the thesis to the examiners, these are anonymous, these are external examiners. They are not from the teaching panel all like professors from outside places so professionals sometimes uh, people abroad when the thesis is sent we ask them to evaluate it for for two year full time research two year full time research we want to evaluate them for whether this is sufficient for a two year full time research which means like 
two publications usually in general two full manuscripts must be published from the mp if you have three or four great if you only have one and there will not be any another one then the examiners might think this is not enough for mp it's not enough for mp so at least two publications should be there whether national or international just a one page abstract not enough abstracts are good they are additional they are dessert but you need the main course dessert is good if you have several abstract 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 conference proceedings that's good but you need for infield two uh, publications at least for a phd you need three publications at least they do not check whether you spend five years or six years so what we check is whether it is equivalent to two year full-time research which means about two publications full publications so many people asking for changing the master's program. I think you can do it and get it get it done. Make sure uh, once you get it done, whether you are in the MIS, whether you are in the right program, please visit MIS. Please get your passwords. Now, uh, Mr. Hemajit will talk uh, to you after our discussion here. And uh, a senior assistant librarian also wants to talk to you for about five, 10 minutes and uh, ask any kind of questions you have. Now, nowadays, you cannot bring the students to the main library or, or the PGIA library, but uh, we have many online situations so that you can, uh, if you need any online request, I think uh, when you contact the senior assistant librarian, she is here with me right now. And uh, so um, uh, she will try to answer. Uh, so the, the DC, DC, uh, there is any design form for the submission of medical certificate. There is no design form for the signing of the medical certificate. If you just ask the G, uh, probably the DMO, if you ask the DMO, DMO will give you a regular medical certificate. That's more than enough. With his seal, more than enough. During this COVID period, we usually uh, get, get these things more than enough. Even when people submit like uh, some other kind of a certificates, the medical certificates, we sometimes uh, talk and try to get special approval from the from the board of management and target. For example, uh, some people get it from Ayurvedic doctors, and uh, then uh, it becomes kind of difficult for us. When you get uh, from Ayurvedic doctor, it becomes difficult for us uh, because uh, the current Western system uh, council doesn't accept the Ayurvedic. When Ayurvedic have their own council, so try to send the proper medicals. Uh, just a letter with their seal and uh, the condition, they know how to write, give a medical. That form is enough. So there is no specific form to fill. Good question. Uh, uh, there are a few uh, other students, uh, my friends who want to register. Yes, please. Try, okay, for the food science program. Okay. Um, officially, we are closed, but uh, I think if you can manage to send all your requirements, before the prerequisites and before the program begins, I think we can entertain. The prerequisites will begin on uh, 26th. If you don't need prerequisites, then uh, the regular program will begin uh, on uh, end of March. So if you can send those things in a hurry, and uh, I think uh, we can take you into the bus, although the official deadline is over, I think probably that is not illegal to do so. We are not doing a crime, we are taking more students. So if there are these last minute requests coming in, I think we can still uh, bring them. But they should have these valid degree certificates. If you are still an undergrad, you can, we cannot take you. It's illegal to take undergrads in. So if you don't have a degree certificate, we cannot take you. So how is the MIS registration done? Good question, uh, 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 Miss Hemajit. This is for you. I think you are waiting and uh, please uh, explain, take them through to get into MIS and how to get the password and what are they in the MIS. Now there will be a lot of videos and online uploads. A lot of things will go on in the, in the, in the MIS now because of this online situation. Usually we give, we give hand in materials, but now most of these things like the lecture notes and things will be in the MIS and we are coming up, trying to come up with a Moodle and an LMS, the learning management system. Uh, with this one, I think you can uh, go this way. Okay, so do we have library facilities in online mode? Good, good question. The senior assistant uh, library is right here with me. So when I finish this uh, chats, I will hand over the mic to her. She will sit in my chair here and she will tell us that they, they are all senior people with uh, master's degrees and uh, uh, academics. They are considered as academics. 
can you please tell me the registration procedure oops janani you need to talk to uh, miss kumar and uh, i think uh, you can uh, he can explain uh, how to uh, get the registration procedure uh, done and uh, his phone will be busy today uh, quite a lot but uh, keep talking keep talking to him or even to swarna and uh, they will help you keep trying and uh, they will help you you have still have time uh, yes so i have paid 120 uh, what okay 120 so that is good that's good um i have already i will not uh, uh, entertain individual questions but uh, general questions only individual questions please talk to me uh, i will uh, if you have any questions please talk to all these numbers that were given deputy registrar emajit kumar all these numbers you can talk i have already sent transcript to my birth issue was taking two recommendations before 26 feb because my supervisor is not okay you don't need the recommendation from the supervisor you can send the recommendation from anything these are just two recommendations they will not prevent you from getting this one will you accept e versions of recommendations yeah we accept e versions of recommendations for the moment and we will uh, use it but uh, then in time please send the hard copy by mail or something so that your file will be complete but we will proceed with your e version we understand the difficulty in traveling and all this thing should uh, should we pay first in before to things of february um, if you are doing uh, if you are getting into the prerequisite courses 26 february uh, by that time uh, if you pay the first installment then you are then you are great then you are fine if you don't have any prerequisite usually the board of study indicate in your application whether you have to do the prerequisite or not if you are not sure please check with kumar and make sure that whether you have to follow certain prerequisites or not if you don't have to uh, uh, if you don't have any prerequisite requirement given by the board then normal term will start on 20 about end of march then so you have time until that to get uh, make the first in installment even if you don't make the first installment uh, at that time we will uh, let you be, stay as a provisional student for some time and we will make a decision like okay after this time when it comes to the middle of the first semester we cannot uh, keep you like that one so that time you will have to make a decision whether you want to pay or not uh we want to come on ground please let us come uh, at least the people near candy this all uh, we'll see we, it all depends on the uh, the students and the and the teachers some teachers whether they have the facility to do, do it uh, on hybrid mode so darshika is asking for hybrid mode for the people in candy to come to pgia so it, it all depends on individual teachers in my case i am teaching the basic stat yeah sure you can come in because i am teaching at the pja but some people when they are teaching at the uh, at the online sometimes they stick to uh, their own lecture rooms they are in the they are sometimes in their own faculty some teachers are from wyamba they stay at wyamba and deliver online then you cannot go to wyamba so it all depends on individual teachers where they are teaching you can ask these questions uh, in the afternoon at 1 o'clock thank you very much can you please let me know mr kumar contacts okay uh, i send it uh, i hope go abroad next year can i complete my msc from abroad um that i think you have to ask uh, whether you can complete msc from abroad you can ask from the from the board of study uh, um, if they are doing online yes if they are uh, all the online parts you can complete uh, from abroad all the on ground parts you may not be able to continue so it all depends on how they all the hybrid parts you can all the online parts you can all the other courses you may not be able to do it but you have 5 years to complete so if you come back you can uh, do those things otherwise we will give a transcript for the parts that you have already completed can uh, we change the course from uh, from msc to mba yeah you can change from msc to mba uh, no problem uh we will send you application please send a request we will send you a, a application to M mba the board of study business administration and their time table is slightly different they take students at different times and their orientation is at a different time so you may have to talk to that person 
uh, them and uh, and uh, you can of course do it but then you will have to wait till they start wait till they start so uh, bsc degree from foreign university they had sent my transcript via email and the postal service are closed was it will it be issued to continue my study no janani you can send the whatever this one you can send it with us we will maintain you as a provisional student and you can continue uh, because this is from a foreign university but but at one point you have to you have to send the uh, we need the official transcript because all kind of cheating is going on all kind of money making people are uh, they are from uh, some people say i have a, a transcript from puerto rico or seashells and all these kind of things are happening these days and we cannot rely on any of those things unless those are real so most of these bsd degree foreign universities are very responsible but some of these ones who are like just for money they don't even send the transcript to us they don't even uh, communicate with us and those students are provisional students we cannot uh, convert them into regular students unless they give the proper uh, transcripts with us verified by their registrar once they send it we call the registrar that that place abroad and verify because all kind of things are happening these days some students have uh, paid lot of money for these bogus places and uh, unfortunately uh, even no transcript uh, the transcript is not according to our credit format uh, their number of hours are not matching with ours all kind of things are, uh, issues are there and this is unfortunate but uh, there are people like that in the world i have completed uh, take the i apply for mphil or phd without masters or msc uh, if you have a bachelor's degree uh, you can apply for uh, mphil you can apply for mphil not for phd but if your bachelor's degree has a first class you can directly apply for phd otherwise you have to upgrade i have a sampath credit card my credit limit is uh, very low can i upgrade it to yeah you can talk to the sampath people and try to upgrade it to 150000 you can even tell you are pj students and see whether you can get something uh, talk to them and tell them you are a pj student and tell that i told them uh, if you talk to some uh, sampath people in kandy or mulgampala they know me personally they come here some of them are students of pj so if you talk to them uh, like a uh, uh, mulgampala branch So candy branch here, uh, you can probably get it done. I have requested, but I haven't seen the time to forty five days. Yeah, you can uh, if your uh, transcript is still waiting, you can continue as a provisional student. Could you know whether there are engineering master degree recognized by the IESL? I don't know any engineering master's degree recognized by the IESL. The agriculture engineering degree, I think you are talking about. agriculture engineering degree recognized by the iesl uh, the general nancy is i don't know um, uh, because this is the first time somebody asked this kind of a question the, our degree is agriculture engineering so and the bio systems engineering they are not chemical engineering process engineering electrical engineering or civil engineering so i don't know the answer to that one but you can have a discussion at the afternoon session with the board of study ag engineering uh, group they will probably elaborate and give more or we will ask iesl whether they will recognize or not should we do the total payment at registration not necessarily you can pay it in two installments usually do i have sent a prerequisite course in the undergraduate time but the faculty delay yeah same thing a research component of some but uh, somewhere abroad as an exchange component yeah you can do a your research component uh, somewhere abroad as an exchange component yes sure she will get me uh, trying to make arrangements trying to find a supervisor there let's let's uh, have uh, local supervisors as well as foreign supervisors let's uh, and get it established and then uh, the get that uh, foreign component uh, written down so that you can put a whole uh, phd or mphil proposal with the foreign component and get it approved by the board of study here and get that uh, local and foreign supervisors appointed into a, a supervisory panel and you can go there in the very vijay bandar you have to put it into the chat uh, we cannot talk when you are raising hands put your thing in the c q and a section then i can answer now put it in the q and a section so there are any procedure from pj to get bank loan for masters that's what i told uh, talk to those uh, banks directly pj does not want to get involved uh, directly or become financially responsible 
the the board of management doesn't not let me do that and become a financial burden to another bank but uh, we facilitate you can talk directly to those people the numbers given masters would be a foreign recognition uh, if some one register for master but would be the foreign recognition for that course that they will come and msc okay that i don't know that i don't know uh, somebody is asking that one year master whether it is considered as msc this is a worldly question this is the first time we are doing not only us the pgis pghs everywhere in the country this is how the, we are doing now if the foreign uh, group has an issue please ask that foreign registrar to inquire from us so that we will explain what our one year masters degree is all about and what is slq we will give that all that explanation until that person recognize this as a one year msc but everybody will recognize it masters as a one year msc even us registration the voucher the recognition i haven't received the registration form or the voucher to do the payment so you can uh, talk to kumar about this one if kumar is there please ask him to come so that i can ask after complete the master degree can we follow mpil yeah you can follow mpil sure uh, i know uh, from which bank that we get the credit card so we told okay publication with more than 32 sites in hindi so may be able to get a full scope for my so student loan the pgia we do not have a student loan uh, system uh, but uh, you can talk to the banks and get a loan uh, especially like people's bank people if you come to peradini you talk to peradini manager they are aware and you can ask whether they can get any student loan you may have uh, 32 citations and each index but uh, that doesn't give you any full scholarship uh, we don't have a scholarship program for msc maybe we should but not yet do we have the final date for our payments yeah uh, uh, by 26 february if you are applying for uh, if you are following uh, prerequisite courses but you can go until the beginning of the first semester that is uh, first week uh, the end of march uh, to make the payment uh, as i said you can go little longer if you want but that is not advised uh, you cannot go to mis without making the payment so you cannot register for any course without making the payment that is the problem so that those are the the starting dates of these courses are the deadlines for oh, weekend full time workers to see me give any excuse for 80% admitness ooh i don't know university if you ask the senate senate does not give any eight, uh, excuse for 80% attendance for weekend full time workers don't register for the courses that you cannot follow for example if you have to work on saturday and you are only free on sunday don't register for saturday courses don't register for saturday courses register only for the sunday courses where you can attend because you will definitely not be able to attend uh, 80% attenders officially speaking we are strict but i uh, but uh, with this covid situation and all this online situation uh, things have it are little shaky but as a director i cannot say uh, 80% attendance is not considered officially i cannot say 80% attendance is not considered because senate level it is considered so don't register if you are doing shift duty i know like in farm managers and people if they work on uh, if they come to pgi on saturday they have to work on sunday or vice versa so you have to arrange your courses drop or add once the time table is given and discuss with your bosses and see whether you can get any leave for certain ones and if some teachers like to do on weekdays evening like from 6 pm to 8 pm uh, maybe you can register for those courses so with the time when the time tables are there with settling down uh, you can decide whether to drop some of those courses that you have already registered or add some of those courses into the mis you have to go to the mis to drop you have to go to the mis to add the uh, first semester payment deadline okay so the research before finishing the coursework so can we start research before finishing the coursework okay so while in the first year yeah you can start 
uh, but uh, this is somewhat kind of uh, shaky. You can officially start and uh, not officially, you can unofficially start and do, but uh, go on. But when you are doing MSc coursework and research, uh, you have the coursework, 30 credits are kind of supposed to be like full time. It is kind of supposed to be you know, so unofficially you can start and, and continue because you really have to complete. But officially at the end of the uh, coursework period, at the end of the coursework, second year beginning, you have to give us the proposal. We have to present the proposal and we have to get it approved and get the supervisors approved. And uh, then only we consider it as the official beginning date. And then from that date, you have to spend one year, minimum one year before submitting the thesis before submitting the thesis. So one, if once you, uh, one, once one year is gone, you can submit the thesis. So if your research takes more than one year, it is uh, unofficially okay to start the work, uh, plant the, uh, make the uh, land preparation, plant the crops, all those things you can do. Uh, but official date of start is at the end of completion of your coursework. And uh, uh, when you submit the concept paper, when you get it approved, uh by the supervisory panel uh by the by the board of study and appointment of the supervisory panel that is the beginning that is the beginning of this one and uh, from that date you have to wait for one year so that is the second year that is the second year and end of the second year you can submit the thesis after completing my phd can we directly move to phd yeah you can directly move to phd Although I made payments uh, and uh, get registered, I am unable to enroll semester courses. Still, they are not available. Yeah, yeah, they may not be any available. So, but uh, it's okay uh, because the, the real term will begin uh, later. And uh, you can ask this question from uh, Hemajit. Hemajit will join you, uh, the other system, at least will join you soon. Ask that question from him. The, how will the payment can be divided if I tried reading the guidebook but cannot identify the minimum installment? So the, the first payment minimum installment is like if the MSc is uh, 150,000, then uh, uh, it is uh, first payment is 75,000. So it is 75,000 plus the registration that is 10,800. Huh? Okay, okay. So, so, so according to your new package, it is 16,000. 16,300, uh, 16,300 plus that, uh, seven, that the half of the MSC program. That is the first installment that you need to pay. People are asking about vouchers. How do they get the payment vouchers? Uh, Mr. Kumar is here, I'm asking him. But they are saying that they haven't got it. So are there delay in sending by us online vouchers to people? Uh, yeah, I have given you a number, so so that means like certain students have not got the payment vouchers yet. So, so you need to check because there are 500 students. How many have you sent the payment vouchers? So you have sent it for up to about 400. So there are about 100 students who are waiting to get the payment voucher. So you need to send them quickly. Okay, degree, other and things are provisional things are there. But uh, okay, so if you uh, if your degree has an issue, like uh, if you are given like a provisional status, we don't usually ask you to pay, because if you send the wrong like uh, some from bogus transcript from Seychelles or Papua New Guinea or somewhere, and uh, give it to us, and if we are not accepting it, then you cannot be a student here. If your official transcript is not here, you can be a student here. If you take, if we take your money, then we will have to give that money back to you. So because of this situation, until your academic side requirements are complete, we do not send you the payment voucher usually. So all the other 400, we have sent the payment voucher. So please contact uh, Kumar, Kumar's number is given and uh, please uh, contact him. Uh, Kumar's number now again is uh, 07. 0716-280-287. So Mr. Kumari is here. So you can ask all these questions that you have. Okay, so the, those uh, numbers are here. Let me see the 
know that uh, numbers uh, there. Um, or you can contact any of these people or otherwise, uh, yeah, rather people. Okay, so these numbers are the Akumar's number is there. So you can talk to them. Okay, so the, I think that we have come to the end of the chat. Uh, so only elective course will be held in Saturday? No. Electives and compulsives are offered in a mixed bag. So some courses are offered on Saturday, some courses are offered on Sunday. Um, so it doesn't matter whether it is elective or, or, or compulsory. The text message about today's orientation, uh, email and some documentary, but I did not receive the email with Zoom link for today's orientation. Uh, uh, okay, um, uh, Nilapul, I think you need to make sure what is going on and uh, uh, Talk to, uh, you can call Mr. Hemajit and see what has happened. We check uh, what uh, email number you have given, whether it is working. Sometimes when PGIA send email to some Google accounts, it goes to you a spam. Sometimes uh, we have seen many times when we send it to a, a certain emails, from your email, it send it to your spam. So go to your spam box and open it up and see whether it is there. That is another thing that we can do. Uh, we have to create credit card prior to installment. Uh, if you go uh, for a credit card, we have to create credit card. No need. Uh, you can um, you can do whatever the way you want. Whatever the way you want, uh, you can make a first installment. And in the middle of the term, if you get some credit card where you can use the credit card to pay, you can use that credit card. It doesn't have to be those three credit cards I said. You can use any credit card. You can even use American Express or whatever. The card that you have, you, as long as you pay, it doesn't matter. So if you pay the first installment uh, by hand and get the credit card, you can use the credit card for the second installment. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter at all. Let's go to chat and see what uh, whether I can see some things here. Uh, some of these are good questions. Let's say good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Oh, thank you for saying good morning. You are very nice. Not clear hearing. Dilki, if you are not clear hearing, uh, uh, do we have an issue about hearing? No problem. Then Dilki, that the problem is with your side. Uh, you have to get these things cleared before getting into online classes. Okay, so, so people are writing their names. I think that's what the whole thing is all about. So many names. Okay. Okay, thank you for sending all these names. Oh my God, so many, 400 names are there. Are there any chat has any questions? Okay, no. So, okay. I have already sent transcript through my, but I was taking two recommendations. Okay, just send the version of the recommendation. No problem, no problem. Anyone need still can join the MIS? Yeah, uh, you can. Yeah, you already sent the transcript. Uh, transcript uh, 3G pay, can I register? Uh, so I am having a first class in food science and technology. Yeah, you can uh, register directly for, Naini, you can register directly for PhD. Congratulations. Uh, you need to find a research grant from somewhere, talk to a teacher and uh, decide about a research proposal and uh, give us a concept paper and get a research grant and we can keep going. When you are registering for PhD, we need a concept paper and uh, people will ask when at your uh, proposal presentation, people will ask uh, about the research grant. I could not compile uh, MPhil in the, can I register for MSc and discount rate? Yeah, if you have, if okay, if you have done MPhil by research, no, you cannot register at the discount rate. Uh, so that is a different degree. But if you if this is like MPhil by course or can research, then that's a special case. Send us an in, uh, information whether it's a course or can research or MPhil by research. If it is MPhil by research and you drop out, we still don't have a rule to give you a discount rate. No discount rate rule yet for MPhils. Um, Okay, same question is asked. Okay, same question is asked about the foreign recognition. Foreign recognition, what we can do is like we can send these transcripts. If you have any question, uh, they can communicate with us. Usually those registrars and the graduate schools, they communicate with us and ask about our possibility. Then uh, 
pretty soon we will be clarifying because that is the norm in Sri Lanka. So they will get to know this is the situation in Sri Lanka. This is not PGI, this is whole Sri Lanka with our quality assurance groups coming in and the PG programs reviews coming in. This will be the norm. Uh, all these M M who have chosen for two year things can convert into MSA. Please tell Kumar and uh, to change it. Please uh, send an email to us. Uh, we will change it. Don't worry at all. Yeah, you can register for one year masters, and uh, uh, when when you go halfway, you can upgrade it to your research part and uh, do uh, get into a two year MSc and complete it. You can change it during any time uh, during the course. Yeah, you have some path credit card and you want to upgrade. Yeah, talk to them and see whether you can upgrade. Definitely. If you already have a credit card, I think they, they are willing to change. I think the same questions were asked here in this one. Um, 26 is the final date of payment. So, so is there time for credit card payment? Okay, um, 26 is the final date of payment. Uh, the question is, uh, Muhammad is asking whether he can get a credit card before that. Okay, you can go a little later than 26. It doesn't matter. Just go for the credit card, okay, for the payment as soon as possible and try to get them done. Uh, as you said, uh, if you if the Muhammad has not paid by the 26, Muhammad is considered as a provisional student. And you can, uh, we will be sending the links to you for the prerequisite courses uh, from 26 February to March, end of March is prerequisite. If you are following prerequisite courses, we will be sending the links, otherwise we, we will not. And uh, so we will be sending the links for the first part uh, for a couple of weeks uh, or maybe a month or two maximum probably. Uh, we don't have that kind of a deadline because this is unofficial. We should not give you, but we are giving under this COVID situation for you to just a grace period for you to pay. Once you pay, you will be considered as a full-time student. Then you can go to the MIS. Otherwise, you cannot go to the MIS. So uh, don't worry much about the 26. Try to get this... Uh, credit cards and these payments as soon as possible. So once you get it, please contact us and uh, so that we will convert you into regular student status. So some people have not get the payment voucher. Lakshani, I think uh, you need to check why you haven't got the payment voucher. Is it because we have not uh, uh, talked to them or whether it is uh, uh, whether uh, you have any problem with your registration? So it is just a small delay from our side. If, we, if your transcripts and the recommendation letters and those things are not complete, then uh, that may be why they have not asked you to pay because uh, uh, we don't want to take money from people who are not eligible uh, to be master students. Okay, this year I will register only for coursework. Can I register for the research later? Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. You can uh, start with the master uh, one year course. And then uh, when you finish the coursework, uh, upgrade it, upgrade it to the MSc or complete your MSc and uh, complete your master's and then uh, try to think about a, a two year or not two year, uh, the MPhil or PAD. I have registered for MSc, can I change to MPhil? Yeah, you can change to MPhil, but uh, yeah, we need a concept paper. When you are submitting to an MPhil, MPhil means no coursework. You can take coursework, up to 10 credits you are given free. MPhil degree is 2,50,000. So within that, up to 10 credits you can take free. But you can take any number of courses. But if you take extra courses, you have to pay. Uh, but no coursework requirement. No like a 30 credit requirement for MPhil. MPhil is for research. But if somebody, some student want to follow a stat course or data analysis course, or if the supervisor says go and follow, student can follow. No problem with others and get a get the uh, uh, credits also, but not a requirement. But if the supervisor says better to follow, you follow. Uh, uh, when you uh, change it to MPhil, we need a concept note from you and uh, put you into the right board of study. And the concept with the concept note, the board of studies will appoint you an interim supervisor to develop the proposal with you. Sit with that person and develop the proposal. Once the proposal is developed, you have to present the proposal. With the proposal presented. Uh, with the proposal presented, uh, the Board of Study will appoint you a supervisory panel to start officially and go on with your work. That is the real situation. And uh, certain boards, when you have a concept paper, certain boards like you to come for online 
and uh, present you a concept paper. Certain boards ask you to present your con concept paper. Ask this afternoon with the board of study whether you need to present the concept paper because at the concept paper level, they discuss with you and uh, decide what kind of uh, uh, interim supervisor should be uh, allowed for you. So you have to present the concept paper and then you have to present the proposal and submit the revised proposal and start your research. I have uh, done pre-request process in the undergraduate and the faculty delay is ending. I want to cut down the payment of the payment. Yeah, you can, but uh, make sure. But uh, this is uh, Muhammad uh, uh, Nixad. Nixad says like he has done this undergrad, but if you have, uh, please check uh, Nixad whether you need to do math and stat both. If it is stat, uh, prerequisite, then basic stat prerequisite, then please make sure, please make sure that uh, that you get B or above in the undergrad. And once you get B or above, then you can, of course, then you can, of course, uh, uh, submit uh, your, um, uh, your, your request to the board of study to exempt you from that prerequisite course. If you get B or above for a stat at the undergrad, you can be exempted. Some boards don't like that exemption, like an engineering board doesn't like that exemption. They think everybody better to do rather than skipping. This is a very important basic courses. You cannot just, uh, you know, we cannot produce half-baked products. We want to produce full-fledged uh, responsible people who will carry on the reputation of the PGIA abroad and shine. So we don't want these people looking for shortcuts. But uh, those people uh, for the uh, prerequisite, if they have BO above in many boards, many boards they say like, okay, you don't have to do. So for mathematics and the stat. We are uh, Eastern University pending results. Our faculty don't give recommendations effective date until the results will release. But they give a recommendation without the effective date. And also they tell that they can tell a letter with the end of the final lecture. I will talk to uh, Eastern University people. I think, uh, I don't know. Uh, whether it is uh, Dr. Paktina, then uh, who is there right now as the Eastern University person, the, that dean is in our board of management. I will talk to them and ask uh, what is their situation. Uh, so, Achini, you can uh, Achini, Achini, you can uh, send the application and you can continue. You can continue with your, the prerequisites and you can continue with your course as a provisional student. This is not your fault. But I hope you pass the final exam. So, uh, so uh, you can continue. You can continue, and if you are not getting the links, please let us know. We will send you the links until you get these transcripts done. Is this the first batch you are doing in online after COVID? Uh, no, uh, no, Hathi. Uh, we have been doing this one since 2019, 2021, 20, uh, 22. The last whole year we were doing online. Last whole year we were doing online because we tried to get the students, we could not get the students here. So we have been, we are used to this online business now for a quite a while. Actually, I think uh, the whole full pledge thing started in 2020, uh, September time that we started this whole business about this one. Even before that we did on and off online. Hello sir, have I, I have got my results for one subject in my degree program, probably my release much I can. Uh, uh, can you explain how can I submit my transcript to PGIE? I have got my result for one subject in my degree program. I don't know what that means. Okay, you need the whole transcript, uh, Muhammad, once again. Whole transcript once again. Uh, so I am at this chat, people are putting in the chat. So I'm. Uh, uh, you have to get the whole transcript until that you are provisional student. You can continue, but as a provisional student, you will not be given a chance to make a payment and enter into the MIS proceed for the exams. Uh, online lectures are really helpful for students traveling long distance. I know, I know online lectures are helpful, but at the same time, uh, Madhushi, the problem is sometimes with the poor connection, some students are just logging on and pretend to be there and they are not there. Sometimes the connection is poor, sometimes the power goes off, some students uh, laptops uh, charge, some people say the whole day they have the power cuts. So they cannot charge even their mobiles. All kinds of problems are there, Madhushi. We, we see the both sides. During the last year, we saw both sides of this one. Definitely, the interactions are pretty poor in the online situation. And I am I am sad that I have taught some students and given even the grades last year. Uh, I even haven't seen their face. That is usually not my way, but this is how the post-COVID situation. 
yeah we have the recording and uh, the danushka uh, danushka we can uh, you can uh, go to uh, the web and get it i got my uh, graduate certificate but i didn't receive payment voucher yeah uh, feroz uh, mifra please uh, talk to kumar please talk to kumar and uh, if you got to your graduate certificate also if you he will check your file and if everything is right he will send you a payment voucher no problem so i graduated from the faculty of agriculture university of peradeniya i had a c grade for stat but i have got b and a grades for stat in the fourth so i need to follow pre grade okay uh, you cannot uh, know this one by contacting mr kumar you have to contact uh, surya goda sir uh, you know surya goda sir or lasant sir um, uh, and uh, you can surya goda sir is number has been given in the presentation he is the board of study chair you can contact board of study chair or secretary and uh, show the situation they will decide whether you have to do this or not because you have a b grade or a grade there is no problem anjali doing these courses uh, if you do these courses uh, usually like uh, this basic stat is taught by me usually we taught in a very simple manner and uh, for the stat students and uh, engineering students and econ students i think uh, it is taught by professor samit for the other boards uh, it's taught by me and uh, we start with very very basics and if you follow i am sure you will be benefited you will be benefited a lot this is a really good course uh, for those we because we know people come from uh, less privileged areas with uh, bad teachers all kind of people are there so uh, uh, we cannot blame when you come to pga uh, we have to give them the opportunities uh to become a full pledged confident members so so from uh, department of economic science study i have applied for masters in applied uh, if i upgrade to msc is it possible to do research related to economics uh, yeah you can do research related to economics uh, uh, but you are a stat student so uh, you are uh, economics uh, research should have a substantial component of statistics you should have a substantial component of statistics to make it happy so um, when you present the proposal the board of study biostat uh, group will the teachers will show uh, uh, look at your proposal carefully and see whether you have to add some more stat thing or whether it is sufficient they will tell you <clears throat> okay can you please display again the slide mentioned about bank content details now i am not a regular student you will send the zoom link for prerequisite classes Uh, yeah, Rikas, uh, we will send the uh, Zoom links for this one. If you don't get the Zoom links, um, uh, call uh, Kumar and see why the uh, Zoom links are not given. Or call him, Jit, and see. Um, <clears throat> uh, we'll uh, so, uh, uh, but we will send only for a few weeks. After that, uh, we will probably stop doing that. Uh, we cannot let you just go through the whole thing without making payments. will the records online upload into the mis some people do some people don't some people upload into their google drive and give you the link to go into that one we are improving our moodle and our lms system and we may ask the teachers to upload it into the online some teachers don't like their lectures to be uh, uh, online lectures uploaded they want all the students to come because these uploaded ones are misused by some competitors some kind of other people some people who want shortcuts some people who wants to use put into their propaganda some people want to use their these slides and uh, uh, show in their own msc program some of them are teachers and using these in their own kind of things all kinds of things can happen so some teachers don't like uh, this intellectual property to be uh, distributed uh, care free haphazardly so but some people will upload if i put a medical for subject uh, i've already come but so i put a medical for a certain subject and i already completed but still results aren't really some kind of delay happened my most probably my completion letter will be issued in one month um, <coughs> you can contact you can contact that uh, teacher uh, <coughs> uh, that uh, tutor uh, and ask to follow up there what is have really happened with your medical because we the board of studies meet in every two months uh, so what happened to your medical whether it has gone or whether you are considered uh, you can give a medical but you have to sit for the exam uh, gpa and past grade slide 
whether I can uh, show. Can you go to the GP and Plasgate site from there, uh, Patsala? Is it possible? No, no. From you, you, you can't. Okay, so I have to go to GP and pass grade slide. Let me see. You should know GPA by now. I think you should know GPA by now. Mm, GPA situation. The pass grade for individual course. Every course you should have C or above. So C plus is passed. B minus is passed. But all subject average must be above three. That means if you have a C plus, you need a B plus to A minus to count and get you averaged uh, to three points. Uh, can we upgrade the MSA to MPhil uh, up to the end of first semester? Yeah, you can upgrade. Uh, you can. You don't have to upgrade. You can actually request directly uh, for MPhil because MPhil doesn't have any uh, uh, coursework. So you don't have to MPhil. You can register directly. If you want to follow coursework and do an MSc, finish the MSc and get the transcript and get a degree and then go to MPhil. If you want to go for the two year research, go to the directly register for the MPhil without wasting time and uh, send the concept paper and continue your MPhil. If you want to, if you are interested in doing 30 credits, then uh, sit, uh, do that one year MSc and finish it and then register for MPhil. Can you the career positions in abroad after completing in machine to the nutrition? Okay, uh, Vaidhiratna, I think uh, this uh, Dr. Vaidhiratna, Dr. Vaidhiratna, I think you can discuss these uh, issues at the afternoon at one o'clock uh, with the uh, board of study. Uh, the board of study people are waiting for you to ask uh, what are the opportunities you have in food and nutrition. Enormous amount of opportunities are there. There are people who are going even with the bachelor's degree and doing well. If you do uh, Chaturanga, you have to uh, type it. You cannot raise the hand. You have to type it uh, in the question and answer with the chat to answer. Uh, uh, so, a um, uh, lot of opportunities are there, uh, Dr. Vaidhiratna. If you do well and if you uh, get all A's, we can strongly recommend you. If you publish your work, we can strongly recommend you. Uh, if you get poor grades and then if we say you are an excellent student, they will not believe me. But otherwise, even I can send the supporting letters for you. So good luck with all your work. Try your best. Okay, these are the, all the chats I got. I think this is uh, the question and answer. There are some more chats. Please let me know how can whether you have received by my institute the first degree. Ruani, you can talk to uh, Kumar and try to get a uh, check. Uh, ask the Kumar. Um, is it uh, individual questions? You can ask uh, common questions. I can answer. Uh, it is possible to get the recommended credit card before the registration. I don't know, Joseph, uh, whether you can get it, but you can try. You can try. And uh, until you get it and until you pay, uh, we cannot register you. Uh, if you can pay at least like the, the first installment without the credit card, later you can use the credit card for the second installment. Uh, the credit cards are not given by the PGIA. You can talk to them and usually they will take about a week or two. So I already got some path credit card. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can ask, uh, you can bug them and ask them to increase it to 150,000. Or you can use your credit card. Uh, uh, or you can, uh, Nirmal, you can use your credit card to pay the second installment or first installment. Just pay it, uh, use your Sampath card and make the first installment. You will not get much benefit, but you will get the registration and you will get going. And uh, once you make the, all these installments, when it comes to the second semester, uh, you will have, because you are paying in installments like 10,000, 10,000, 10,000 like that. So like first semester for like, uh, so you will be paying about 60,000 so that your credit card will have enough money to make the second installment. My faculty with my research, I handle the transcript. Can I get the result? Uh, I haven't uh, handled the uh, transcript. Without handing over that uh, transcript, uh, we cannot we cannot uh, give you a payment voucher. We don't want uh, to take somebody's money if the application is rejected. We want the application to be correct because once the money comes, uh, it goes to consolidated fund, and we have difficulty getting that uh, money paid back and write you checks. That is a difficult part. 
online lectures uploaded to mis i don't know some teachers do some teachers don't there is no as you said these are intellectual properties lot of people misuse them and uh, the, the, it goes to their own hands now we have competitive masters degrees everywhere and uh, i know i know i have gone to some universities that they are using my lecture material so all these things are happening some teachers don't like i i don't mind uploading but uh, i i like all uh, iresha i like all the students to come on ground this kind of uploading thing and checking later it's it's not very acceptable uh, uh, it is it is frustrating when you have 10 students in the class and only four are there and ask, other six are asking us to upload we want to develop these things interactively we want to spend all two full hours sometimes without interaction we end up finishing the class in one and half hours and uh, uh, so we don't have log reports to show that we have done two hours the in interaction is essential interaction is important and uh, you must be there otherwise it is pretty boring to talk to a empty classroom any additional charges for prerequisite apart from the tours fee uh, prerequisite courses have additional charge huh? 3000 rupees per subject like for uh, so that 3000 for maths another 3000 so it's any big difference recognition between masters and msc uh, will master in foreign opportunities i am planning to maybe do the one year course i just want to know um i don't know the answer to to this question uh, uh, in usa like uh, countries i will try to answer i have done a masters in usa uh, that is a, uh, that is almost equivalent to like a one year coursework and one year research situation there we continue like a two year research for mscs while taking courses of course i am a full time student sitting there all the all seven seven days in my uh, graduate office and so um, uh, it is considered a two year research plus coursework so that is uh, so that is will be equivalent to somewhat equivalent to our two year msc one year msc one year msc is considered as a taught msc T A U G H T. It is considered as a taught MSc. That kind of MSc is available in places like UK. They are research component. I have done this kind of uh, uh, followed this kind of degrees uh, in like Edinburgh, like universities when I was very small. Um, in that one, we have we complete the whole MSc in one year. It's about nine month coursework and three month research. They call it taught MSc. so that three month research component is not considered as a, as a msc and if you don't complete that three month period they call, call it post graduate diploma and so when you submit a one year msc they will consider it as a 30 credit coursework without any significant research component and whether they will consider it for you a phd or other things up to them up to them but if it is a msc course so can research uh, they will consider it as a 30 uh, one year of 30 credits of course work plus one year of full time research and that's it how they consider by the particular teacher particular professor in a particular dairy lab or particular molecular lab i don't know how they will use it if you do a two year one to emsc you will have a one year of research or maybe more and you may have some publications with you and that publications will be helpful when you are doing an uh, applying for a phd abroad because the teachers ask whether you only have the coursework background whether you have research background so some teachers uh, of course some teachers, some students go with bachelor's degree bachelor's degree straight for a phd so these things happen so i am not quite sure it's all individual it's all individual and some people send the transcripts of the msc and they think okay now you have like a one year msc they some teach some professors abroad say okay that one year msc that is good they say okay that is nice that is for that they can think that is you have a very strong coursework background they consider it that way they say you have a 30 credits of courses all these courses you have done so you have a pretty good academic course background at a post graduate level so maybe you can do a good research with us and some people say you don't have any research experience so it's all depends madhuri so you need to talk to these people and get your research side also going and get some publications 
in your site. So I think I have to stop at this time because of the time limitations. And at one o'clock we need to start. And I think our discussion went very far, very far. So now uh, I will just uh, hand over uh, the mic to a senior assistant librarian. And uh, please, uh, I think uh, because of the time limit, Hemajit also has to talk. So I think um, uh, we probably answer the, the questions. So you can uh, come here and you can explain a little bit about email, give you a phone number, that is the best thing, and uh, ask them to, and your email, and ask them to talk. So uh, right now I'm inviting our senior assistant librarian, uh, the Ms. Hatch. Thank you very much, sir. Um, good afternoon everybody so let me introduce the agriculture library and how we could uh, help the help uh, your um, postgraduate studies at pja uh, right so i'm not going into uh, details but uh, the library is uh, agriculture library uh, you know there's a library network uh, in the university, so the main library and there are uh, branch libraries for each and every faculty. So the agriculture library uh, belongs to both agriculture faculty and the postgraduate institute of agriculture. So, uh, right. So the main objective of the uh, library. Can you hear me now? Yeah, right. So the main ob objective of the library is to strengthen the agriculture education and research programs of the university uh, by providing information in print, non-print, and electronic media. Right. So the layout of the library. Uh, so the, there's there is this is a four-storied building, and you can see the areas. But when you come to the library, you can get more information about the library. So these are some pictures, the library counter uh, and the e-zone of the library and the reference area of the library with specially designed uh, furniture for your serious study. Uh, and the membership of the uh, library, how to get the membership? Uh, the PGI, you need either the PGI identity card or the letter of admission issued by PGI or name in the class list of PGI and a payment of library fees of 1,500 and a refundable deposit. Uh, so uh, at the moment, if you are unable to uh, come to the library to get yourself registered, I'll try to get the class list from PJA so that uh, you will be considered as registered student of PJA for online services and other things. So for that, you need to make the payment to the, uh, the library payment for membership. Right. So the opening hours, as usual, uh, this, these are the opening hours during the semester and the faculty vacation. We are usually closed on public holidays and university holidays, but during the faculty examination time, sometimes these opening hours change. So that if when you come to the library resources, uh, there are about 40,000, more than 40,000 40, publications and the types are textbooks, monographs, reference materials, maps, reports, theses, and audiovisual materials. So all the books are arranged according to the subject. So the agriculture and related sciences come under 630 and uh, it divides as plant crops 631, 32, like that. And also we have some books on the economics, then the management and statistics like that. So they don't belong into this 630. So when you come to the library, you can see the arrangement of books according to the subject. And the arrangement of uh, print periodicals are according to the alphabetical order. So the students can borrow two lending books. Uh, for a period of two weeks. But if you want to extend the uh, period of uh, time you want, uh, if you want to keep the book more, for more time, you can extend them uh, for another week uh, if it is not reserved, but you have to inform us before the due date. Say if the due date is 1st of March, then before that you have to inform us that you want an extension. And there's a fine of rupees five per day uh, unless if you don't return the book on time, uh, that is because we encourage you to return the book because all the, all the students should have an opportunity to use the book. So the books should be there in the library once you use it. So if a book is damaged or lost, you have to inform the library immediately because otherwise the fines will be calculated. 
So you can settle the damage later, but still you have to inform the library. So otherwise, this five rupees will be uh, calculated until you inform us to return the book. Uh, and also, you have to be careful about these uh, fines and all that. Uh, so to get the degree certificate, you need a clearance from the library, even if you are registered or not registered. So it's better to uh, return all the books and uh, uh, settle the fines before completing the course. Uh, so how to find information? Say I said there are 40,000 books, but uh, you need only one book at a time. So we have two kinds of catalogs in the internet and also in the internet. So I'll just display them. Uh, catalog in the internet, you have to come to the library to use it and you have to follow this. Uh, I'll just go through the slides. You have to click here and then you will get this window. You type what you want and then you have to click on the binocular sign and then you will get the list of books. And if you want more details that you don't know where the book is, only the title, then you have to click this forward arrow and you have to go and, and go forward and then you will uh, get the uh, call number where uh, the book is located in the library, where book is shelved in the library. So then uh, you can uh, get the help of the library attenders and the library staff members to locate the books. Uh, and you get more details here about the book. And if you go back to the list, you have to click this backward arrow. And you, or if you want to go to the window, then you have to uh, go to the this. Uh, house mark and then you will be directed to the uh, window which I showed earlier. Then the OPAC in the internet, you can use it uh, with your, if you have an internet connection, you can uh, get access to this uh, catalog based on internet. So you know, uh, you, this is a very familiar uh, web page for you to go to agriculture library and then you will be, uh, you will come to this page and you, when you scroll down, uh, here is the OPAC that is online public access catalog. You click there and you will get the uh, place to uh, type your uh, subject or author or anything what you want. And then you have to go here and you will get the list of books, but not only in agriculture library, but in the whole university library system. Then the electronic journals and databases, which you could use. So some of our information is given to you uh, through the web page. So this is the place where you have to use for online uh, information, the journals and the databases. Uh, so e-resources relevant to agriculture are given here. And e-resources uh, relevant to all the, uh, to the whole university, you can access from here. So we'll just go to e-resources in the agriculture library. So the e-books are there. And ebooks are accessible only within the university premises, uh, but you can access up to abstract level from your computer if you have an internet connection. And if you want the full uh, chapter, you can, um, I'll give you the contact details at the end, and you can send us an email uh, requesting for the required book chapter. So if you are a registered member, we can provide you online services in that manner. And also there are um, the databases, full text and partial full text databases. These again, these databases we have given access. The access is given only to the university uh, premises. So university computer network. So you can, but still you can search up to the abstract, uh, but full articles you have to request from us. So we can send it to you through email. And also these are free and open access databases, what we have selected and uh, given access to you. Uh, so these databases, you can uh, get access from anywhere and you can uh, get the full articles also if they have given the full articles. And also there are some free ebooks which you can use uh, without uh, coming to university. Uh, so these free ebooks, you can download the books. And also there are some patents. You know, if you are interested in inventions and innovations, then you can use these patent documents here. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, the patent databases provided by World Intellectual Property Organization, European Patent Office, and the United States Space Patent Office. So all this information you can get through the web page. And also the Sri Lanka <coughs> journals online, 
the Sri Lankan journals given in open access mode. Uh, the tropical agricultural research, which is the publication of the PGIA, is also one part. And also, we have some offline databases. This is the, the essential electronic agriculture library. This is an offline database. You can access this through uh, the agriculture library. And the CD ROMs you have, if you are doing a uh, literature search or something, you can get uh, access to these uh, CD ROMs. Uh, we also can do searches for you. Uh, if you want, uh, so CAB abstract CD ROMs we have avail we are available from 1989 to 2003. So those are the, some of the information and the digital library, the institutional repository of uh, our university. Only the research of uh, or the research work of our university are set, given there. There are four five communities. Uh, the abstracts of uh, the University of Peradeniya research sessions. Uh, then the journals published by university. Uh, the full articles, then the research uh, uh, papers published by our uh, academic staff members in UAP research and the abstracts of thesis submitted to University of Peradeni. So all these you can access uh, from your um, uh, from your home, right? Uh, so if you need more information to see the thesis or something, then you have to come here. But abstracts you can access. Then uh, a little bit about the how to use the library, you know, you all have Uh, so, uh, so how to use the library, uh, you have to, I'm not going into details about how to, you know, you have, you all have already used the library. So you have to show your ID and files at the entrance, and then you are not allowed to take any personal copies of food or drink, and you have to switch off the cellular phones and maintain silence at all times, except in discussion areas, right? So, uh, so now uh, I think you have got some information about the library and thank you for your attention and you are welcome to the agriculture library and this is the uh, email agrilib at pdn.ac.lk and the library counter, you can contact us through these telephone numbers. Thank you very much. Uh, please uh, take down this number, uh, this 081-239-5550, you can talk to them and ask all this information and actually, uh, there is a lot more that uh, the uh, Arshani wants to talk. Usually, she gives about uh, about 15, 30 minute presentation on how to get into this uh, free databases. We will do this one probably at the end of the prerequisite courses before the regular term begins. We will uh, organize a small seminar like this one for about half an hour, one hour. We are, um, it's Arshani, usually she gives all these lectures everywhere. So she will uh, probably talk a lot about this one. Okay, so uh, uh, MISY is uh, now one o'clock, uh, you need to move into the individual board study link. So we need to stop. Uh, thank you, uh, Ms. Arshini, for this one. And I think uh, she will give a lot of details about how to get into TEAL and all these databases uh, later. Probably uh, March, uh, end of March, uh, before the new term begins, we will arrange a time for her to give this uh, uh, detailed explanation on how to do literature search using online uh, based on our free uh, ones. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, so the MIS, as uh, if you have any problem, you can uh, contact uh, Mr. Hemajit. So uh, the situation is now is uh, uh, like uh, when you make the full payment, you will get one MS, one MIS, uh, one uh, SMS saying that the payment has been received. You will get a second MS as uh, talking about uh, how to get into MIS. And you have to use your email and uh, give a password, something so that the, the PGIA can set up your MIS. If you have any issues, please talk to them. So that is the end of our morning session. I think uh, there were about more than 300, 400 students and uh, a lot of the discussion went on. So now uh, I'm sorry that you probably didn't have any time to have a cup of tea or something. And probably if you're at home, you may have already had. I haven't had, uh, but uh, the, now the board of study, your teachers are eagerly waiting for you. Uh, so you can uh, actually, uh, uh, before uh, breaking for a cup of tea or something, uh, please uh, log out from uh, this one and go to your uh, individual board link and log in, log in and uh, keep it logged on so that uh, while you are having a cup of tea or having a snack break or running to washroom, you will be logged on so that the, Go to study uh, teachers, the chairpersons and secretaries, 
can start in like one o'clock or maybe five minutes after one when everybody is on board. So please go ahead and uh, and uh, log out and uh, log into your uh, board of individual board of study uh, account and then uh, grab a cup of tea or something uh, while the when the uh, before the chairperson starts talking. Uh, good luck with everybody. So uh, we hope that you will have a very pleasurable, very nice, uh, very uh, soothing and rewarding uh, time. And we will be very happy to see you that you graduate down the aisles of uh, Mahavali and one of these at uh, the university, prestigious University of Peradini. And uh, I would like to take a photograph with you. Thank you. Yeah. See you sometime. Thank you very much. Keep your communication channels open.